Die Natur hat uns das Schachbrett gegeben, aus dem wir nicht hinaus können noch wollen. Und sie hat uns Steine geschnitzt, deren Wert, Bewegung und Vermögen nach und nach bekannt werden. Und nun ist es an uns, Züge zu tun, von denen wir uns Gewinn versprechen. Ein wirklich beeindruckendes Zitat, was die Faszination dieses Sports umschreibt, was aber auch die Faszination des Lebens beschreibt, denn jeder ist mal am Zug und das gilt nicht nur Schach, sondern auch fürs Leben. I'm joined by Daniel Friedman, the player who has been waiting for this tournament for four years. Five years. Five actually. years, actually, yes. And uh, finally, it's happening. Yeah. Uh, I'm very glad that I was invited. I wasn't so sure that it will happen. And I'm glad that I have the opportunity to play against such strong players, especially against Magnus, whom I never played before. But now you're having two, uh, sorry, one and a half points out of four. Yeah. And it's kind of a decent result against such a field from four games. Yeah, I'm not disappointed with my points. I'm a little bit disappointed with my with the quality of my games. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the only normal game which I played here was the first round against uh, Vincent Kaima. I had better chances, but this was okay. All other games have many mistakes, but still interesting for the spectators, I hope. Let's talk first about the time control, because it's very special. It's not a real rapid, it's not a classical time control or something in between. How do you manage playing this time control in two, two games per day? Is it more exhausting than one classical game? I actually don't think so. Okay, it depends on the game. Uh, sometimes I played one game, it was almost 150 moves, which was like eight and a half hours. There's nothing is more <laughs> exhausted than this. And I think uh, 45 minutes plus 10 seconds, it's quite okay. Mm -hmm. For me, it's okay. And uh, before I just played once with this time control, but without increment, mm -hmm. there are like some rapid tournament in Luxembourg and Echternach which was played always 45 minutes for the game, without increment. So would you play two more rounds per day or two is just perfect enough? <laughs> I mean, it's possible, but two rounds is good because otherwise you have to start early, which is uh, no of the, none of the chess player would like to start early. I think this is fine. Tomorrow will be a little bit challenging because we start at, I don't know, 7 o'clock. So the second game will be starting at around 9 o'clock. Okay, this will be difficult, I think. How special is the Grand Chess Open and Classic for you and for Germany? I think it's very special, not only for Germany, but for the chess world. I mean, so many uh, participants, it's unbelievable. Uh, uh, for five years I played and managed to win somehow the tournament in a tournament we had something like 920 players and altogether around 2000 participants in this year after such a huge pause i thought because they started um, uh, to to make a promotion quite late, late. Yeah. yeah and then i thought okay maybe not so many <laughs> Uh, participants this year and like uh, yesterday I was told it's like 2,800 participants, okay, <laughs> and more wow. than 1,000 players in A tournament, so it means that A tournament will take low place on not only in this hall, which is not big enough, so you have to <laughs> expand, move, uh, yeah. expand like unbelievable, I mean this is, I really enjoyed the tournament, I enjoyed it as uh, I played three times in an open tournament and I think it's always fun, it's difficult of course, two rounds a day, mm -hmm. but okay, you have your chances, high prizes, many known faces, and uh, atmosphere and classic, it's also interesting mm -hmm. with guys like Carlsen and Dingleren and so on. I think it's fantastic that this tournament takes place again and I hope it will continue. 
Will you have more pressure on you when you're going to play in this huge playing hall where everyone is going to be watching or, uh, or not? I don't think so, <laughs> no. I think it's fine. All right, maybe we can go to your games. You played an interesting game against Magnus. Unfortunately, you lost. Because Magnus mm -hmm. was a bit Here. disappointed. He lost uh, his previous game. And then yes. in this position, he played g5. And I played too quickly this move g4, which is a positional mistake because, okay, it looks like black uh, wants to attack, but actually nothing is threatening. So the no normal way it's to play is uh, to have my game on the queen side because uh, here I'm, it looks scary, but uh, black can do nothing, more or less. It is usually said that if you have bishop on g2, normally oh, not always, attack. not always. I had bad experiences even in the, in the mail chess, in the, in correspondence chess, where the computers, early computers, said everything mm -hmm. is fine. You're winning, winning, and then you get mate, mate an eight. So in King's Indian, you have always be careful. But um, this was just a positional mistake. Yeah? So I played g4. Magnus played h5, and now he played very strong move knight g4 because if he will not take on g4, my next move will be queen e2, just to protect this pawn again, and then I start pushing on the on the queen side, and mm -hmm. basically black have uh, no real counterplay here. So this was the right move for him, mm -hmm. and here I thought for a long time, because uh, his idea is quite positional, he just want to retreat with the bishop and push the pawns, g4, f3, g3, mm -hmm. whatsoever. So I think this bishop h3 was the right move, but here this was a, one of the critical moments. I calculated this move. So to protect the bishop, he cannot take because it's pinned, but uh, I didn't like it because of simply king f7, and then I thought he will double rooks on the h line, but interestingly, I'm just uh, in time to play rook a2, rook h8, rook h2, so basically all my pieces are going to protect this guy. <laughs> Here you can push like this, it doesn't matter. So let's say this and then uh, rook h6. So now he wants to double. Now I have knight exactly <laughs> knight of two and, and I'm just in time, you know, like all, all the pieces concentrating on this square and then after exchange and g4, computer says it's equal. <laughs> but it's yeah, it's it's incredible. To but find this was really strange because somehow I saw it, I, I saw it somehow, but not till the end. You know, mm -hmm. not a clear review. I right? looked like it's okay, but then I I went for another continuation. I took on g4 mm -hmm. and ran with my king, uh, which was not sufficient, but was also many interesting moments because Magnus made many mistakes as well. So I had drawing chances all the way through the end mm -hmm. when I made the final mistake with rook a7 check and the time trouble. But okay, it was an interesting game. My mm -hmm. first game against Magnus would be nice not to lose, but uh, still I think the spectators enjoyed the game and this is the main thing for this tournament, I guess, for me at least. And uh, I'm looking forward to play against him the second game. Maybe a revenge. Take Maybe place. a revenge. Who knows? Who knows? Yes. <laughs> uh, one more question to you. Uh, did you do some special preparation for this tournament in terms of a time control or just to the opponents? Unfortunately, I didn't. Uh, I didn't have enough time with family and everything mm, in tournaments. But um, I'm feeling fine. Now, out of the openings, I got, I think. In every game, I got a good position. And what happens later, this is a different story. Because today, I lost stupid game against uh, against Richard Rapport. I had like half an hour and uh, started some pseudo-active moves and just lost in two moves. It can always happen. So I need a little bit more control. <laughs> I yeah, think, we wish yeah. you more control and okay. more luck in your revenge games against Richard and Magnus. Thank okay, you so thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you.
Hello everybody and welcome. We are live from Karlsruhe, Germany for another day's action here at the Grenka Chess Classic. It's absolutely wild scenes as many of you have been watching the video footage uh, before we just went live. Uh, this is the biggest chess festival in terms of numbers in the world. Uh, thousands of players are now descending on the tournament hall. Here's a live camera. You can see there some uh, special guests. We've got Ding there getting pestered for his autograph. Vincent Keimer is there and of course Magnus will be showing up any minute as well as we have an evening round today um, or two evening rounds I should say. Uh, for the main event and we have the open tournament the Grenka Chess Open featuring a number of very well-respected top grandmasters as well the winner of which will also as far as I understand get entry into the main event next year that's why Daniel Friedman is currently playing in the Grenka Chess Classic we're going to be taking you through the action and when I say we I mean me and the one and only the greatest player to ever hail from Rallstedt. You're not really from there, but you know. No, I always appreciate you leaking my neighborhood. I'll be swarmed by all these people. I'm sure they'll be coming knocking on your door. <coughs> Very likely. Jan Gustafsson, ladies and gentlemen. For Ding, I would guess he's a bit of an introvert and as a... Uh, we're not properly mic'd up. Oh, you're not mic'd up? Shocked looks here. Okay. But I already said many white things. As a fellow introvert, this is scary to me. 2,784 people registered for the open tournament. Amazing. And how will Ding and Vincent fight their way through? Well, that's a, that's a good question. They're going to have to find their way through to the big stage. They will get there in the end, I'm sure. Uh, and it looks like, that's, I think that is Wolfgang Grenke just there next indeed. to Vincent Keimer. The man the who man. created the Grenke company from a desk in his bedroom and is making all of this happen. You can see Rick, R Ricky Rapport there uh, with his He's board. not messing around. Come on, get through there, Richard. That's it. And no, now we're talking. No sign of Magnus, but... Uh, Magnus will have found some secret back entrance. 
Uh, for all of you who have just joined the broadcast today, uh, the Grenka Chess Classic, which is the main event, is a six-player all-play-all. And uh, you can see that uh, it's a double round robin as well, so they play each other twice, ten rounds. There will be matches for first, third and fifth on the last day, and it is a 45 minute plus 10 second move time control. We are starting to see more and more faster time controls. A few years ago when I was commentating this event with none other than Peter Leko, who unfortunately could not be here because he's sick, that's why I'm here, uh, we were doing uh, classical time controls. And even way back when, in the Baden-Baden Chess Club, yeah, and we had pff, rounds that were six, seven, eight, it was real classical, eight hour long games, but not anymore. They're faster games, uh, much thanks to the influence of Magnus Carlsen, who prefers the faster time controls. Nevertheless, we've had some amazing chess. Yesterday, for example, the last round of yesterday was just exceptional, uh, just end-to-end -end drama. Um, and uh, we should have had more decisive results. Vincent Keimer making a look, what looked like a completely normal move in an endgame, but he went the wrong way with his king and, and amazingly Ding Lorin got away with half a point, and Carlsen unable to convert a piece up against Maxim Vashir-Lagrav, that would have soured his evening somewhat. That is a position you'd put your house on Magnus winning. But MBL, he's tricky, resourceful, and he managed to hold. And Rapport, well, he didn't really have any issues against Friedman. Standings after round four as follows. Rapport all alone up top on three points, followed by Magnus, Vincent, and Ding. Friedman and MVL having an underwhelming tournament so far. Still plenty of time though to turn things around. It's a double round robin. So. I think Friedman is an underwhelming tournament. One no, number no, of four. Sorry, Pretty good. I, I was referring to MVL specifically there. Um, yeah, no, I think Friedman can be happy with one and a half out of four against this level of opposition. The round today. Who have we got yet? What have we got? We have Vincent against Magnus Carlsen. They'll both be disappointed after the missed wins. Yesterday, Kaimer was actually winning in both his games against MVL and against Ding, but ended up drawing both of them. And now he's facing Magnus, who, not surprisingly, has been his toughest opponent. He beat him in one game in the World Cup in classical time control. It was about to knock him out, actually. I had a good position in the second game, but then ended up losing the match. But in Rapid, the score is 9-0 in Magnus' favor. Oh my. So this has been a tough matchup for Vincent. But of course, he's getting stronger by the day as his hair gets longer. So maybe <laughs> today is the day. Maybe today is the day. We'll see. We've also got MBL against Rapport, which will be, uh, should be a very entertaining match. And Friedman White against Ding. I think Daniel is also going to kind of not be overexcited about having white against Ding, but Ding has looked vulnerable. Ding's game against Vincent last night was really just lackluster at best. So I think Daniel has got every reason to, to be confident and optimistic that uh, he can, well, he's going to maybe provoke Ding because Ding will be again thinking, I, I should try and push here. And maybe Daniel can spring a surprise. Very sharp analysis as usual. <laughs> then we have Maxime against Rapport. Rapport, the tournament leader, three out of four. But Maxime has been a tough opponent for Richard Rapport. Historically, has a fairly commanding lead in their matchup as well. Something like nine to two in rapid games and Maxime with the white pieces. Rapport, he's a, an okay theoretician, but he's not trying to shut down the game, which has been what's toughest for Maxime if people just throw a bunch of theory at him and try to neutralize him. But if he gets to play chess, he's very, very dangerous. So I wouldn't be too surprised if he went were to create some chances against Richie today. We'll see. Shall we do predictions? We have no idea where it's going to start. We've seen um, that, yeah, this, it's a bit like, have you seen the movie The Raid? Uh, no. Ah, it's an excellent movie, I recommend it. But that's okay. a bit the situation where the players find themselves and they have to fight their way through the masses before making it to the board. And therefore, it could take a while until it starts. 
Anyway, I'm saying Kaimar Carlson. I'm saying draw. Okay, I can get behind that. I'll also go draw. Ah, I thought you pegged zero one. Then I'll take zero one. Let's be different. Okay, I'll take the draw. Vincent, you know I don't mean it. MVL against Rapport. I'll go one zero. Ale, Ale le bleu. I'll go zero one just to mix wow. things up. Yeah, yeah. And Friedman Ding. I'll say draw. Don't I'll say one zero it. just to mix things wow. up. Spicy, spicy. Yeah. Indeed. And uh, yeah, as Jan just said, we don't know exactly when the round is going to start. It was scheduled for 13 minutes ago, but as you can see, uh, we now have the one, the only, Sven Noppers, the main organizer of this event, long standing soldier, supporter, uh, you know, part of the furniture when it comes to chess in this part of. Germany, but also chess, uh, chess in Germany as a whole. Sven has been one of the major supporters through Grenka and Baden-Baden. Um, and he loves chess, uh, loves seeing all of his people here turning out in this sort of immense numbers. I mean, it must make him very, very proud of, of the effort he's putting in. He's giving an so address. Just to recap, Sven is a major supporter and soldier of chess in this part of Germany, but also other parts of Germany. And he loves well, chess. I mean, he's from this part, and he he's a big prop proponent of chess in in Bun Bun, no, in Karlsruhe and this area. But his he's from Deitzisau, from from Deitzisau, next to Stuttgart. But his influence starts, has gone beyond that and has reached ah, all, all corners of the country. Is that better said? Got it, got it. No, no, I'm just trying to... And there he is there. I've never seen him play chess. Does he play chess? He doesn't. He has no idea, but that's all right. No, he does. I think he does play a little bit. I'm not sure. Actually, I've never seen him play even a single move. There you go. Great guy. That's um, the stage of the yeah. Open. Nobody where there. We'll see the top pairings of the Open tournament. That's not the hall where the main event players were playing, unless they get moved there, right? Yeah, they get moved so. there, that's the whole point. Yeah, but it's yeah. more boards, so it's both the classic boys I and the so. open boys there? I believe so. Oof. I believe they're going to be playing there. Look at that poster of Ding, by the way. That was incredible. That was huge. We should point out, talking about Ding, Jan, uh -huh. Ding, of course, the current classical world champion, will be facing the winner of the candidates tournament taking place in just a few days, actually. Uh, starting in Canada, Toronto, the FIDE candidates starting on the 4th, and you can watch all the action on chess.com. We've got the uh, women's candidates as well running alongside, and we've got the main candidates where we so can... So you call it the main candidates and the women's candidates, just to get it on the record? Well. Or the, can you call it the men's candidates? The open candidates. Is it the open candidates? There we go. The open candidates. That's the correct phrasing. Before I get the pitchforks come out. Um, it's all right. I don't mind. I'm over it no, these no, days. I'm just, you know, I'm just, people, I'm just people, trying people to, you know, I'll, yeah, give them some ammo. I don't care. Lawrence Trent, I am on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, go for there it. There we go see Hikaru and Fabiano. Yeah. It seems like a very biased thumbnail to me. It is a little bit biased. Two big favourites for the tournament, though, both playing phenomenal chess. Fabi really refound his form in classical, and Hikaru has shown he's more than just a button clicker. He is an awesome, always has been an awesome classical player and over the board player. But of course, there's Nepomnishi, there's the Indian uh, trio, and uh, others who Can could name win. all eight players. Let's see. So I there's two, so. so you just need six more. I think so. So Nepomnishi, mm -hmm. we've got Pragnananda, four. we've got Vidit, five. we've got Gukesh, six. we've got Abasov, seven. we've got... Um, this is where... Where am I thinking now? Uh, I'm sure there's a couple more off the top of my head. See, this is what happens when it's 6.30 in the evening. Who else is playing? Um, mine's com completely blank. Give me the countries. <coughs> the countries? The remaining players. Now let's go through it again. Who did, how many did I say? Seven or eight? Karana. Yes. Nepomnishi. Yes. 
Vidit. Vidit, yes. Pragnanda. Yes. Gukesh. Gukesh. Yeah. Abasov. Yeah. We're missing one. One? Who am I missing? We're getting some, oh. some signs Okay, we're getting, we're getting told to move oh. over. Uh, who am I missing? I don't know. Do you know? No. Oh, right. Who am I missing? Somebody fill me in. I've gone completely blank. Um, <coughs> I'm sure somebody will point it out. Our lovely producer will point it out. But I have definitely forgotten somebody. It's not Anish. No. Maybe Maxime? No. Another Frenchman? Nah. He's eh? not. No. Then I get nothing. I'm going to have a quick look before it's, I go insane. It's Ali Reza. Oh, it's Ali Reza. There you go. Ali Reza. That's the guy I forgot. Ali Reza. Of course, Ali Reza. He had to do all kinds of things to get there. To oh, that's right. He had a bunch to... of matches. Yeah. Open tournament in Rouen. But he made uh, it. Have you ever played in Rouen? No. Okay. I've never been to Rouen. Me neither. But I'm sure. Do you think Sven Noppers has ever been to Rouen? No, Sven doesn't. Doesn't go to Sven. Doesn't leave this, this area. <laughs> He does when he goes to Saint Tropez and Cannes and. I don't think he does. No. He's based in Karlsruhe. <clears throat> Lives here. Loves it here. And brought the biggest chess event in the world. Unbelievable. I remember talking about big chess events while we watched Sven uh, talk there. We're not going to listen to him because it will be in German. But um, did you ever play the Capelle Ronde? Tournament in no. the north of France. Oh. No. That was a big one. That no. was huge. That was one of the biggest opens I ever played, for sure. I wonder what the biggest open ever recorded has been. Maybe it's this year. Could be. 1,300 players? Yeah, it could people. be. Yeah, could be. It's a lot of chess. They'll all just stand there? Don't they have boards where they can sit down? I think these are the fans, the guests and the fans. But Sven, ready to say a few words? I don't like big crowds. You're, you're a man of the people. You just like to um, bath in there, right? But I, oh, I, I, I don't like football stadiums, rock concerts, oh, right. nothing. Right. Yeah, it can be a little bit claustrophobic sometimes. Yeah. yeah. It certainly can, yeah. There's Vincent. There's Vincent, there's Magnus. In fact, if you really were, you know, didn't wear your glasses, you could get them mixed up. They're not yeah, too far they, apart. Uh, I actually don't know who's on who's the left who? and who's on the, on the right. Magnus got a haircut now, so it's easier. It is, but they're Other than that, similar. Seems impossible. Uh, Vincent Keimer, what a story he, he is and has been Tell us, what's the story? Well, I, I saw Vincent at Weisenhaus um, and managed to have a few conversations with him. And he, he's, just, uh, he's just such a pleasant guy. He's such a, he's such a, uh, a good role, mo role model for, for young chess players, especially in Germany. Very professional, very mature. And he's got, as I said yesterday, I think he's got all the talent in the world. And, everything you need to really... I think he could be world champion one day. Uh -huh. I really do. So what could we learn from his story? You gotta be mature, professional and pleasant? Yeah, a lot of players are not mature, professional and pleasant at all. That's and I, Yeah, I think, I think he... Uh, the way he presents himself is, is very good. And I think he... Uh, yeah, he was on the TV program, for example. I think he did a great job. TV. Yep, he did a great job there. So fingers crossed he gets all the recognition and support he deserves. Only 19 years old. Got he to won this Open in He did, I remember that. I remember that. a 14 year old. That's right. I remember that. I played in the same tournament. I was in that one. He still won. And he still won it. Um, he was 27.50, Jan, not so long ago, if I remember correctly, live. You do not. I do not remember correctly. No. no. He never got to 27.50? No, but close. Close, right? Awesome. Improvement is normally not linear, so I'm not too concerned. If it's 2.730, 2.740 or whatever, it's clearly showing he can play 
with all these guys like Magnus really is the last frontier where he struggled but that goes for everybody else in the world too and of course we have high hopes but there's also I think very healthy competition that is not behind him at all frankly in Pragnan and Abdusator of Gukesh, Ali Reza, this whole generation is just incredibly strong already and I can't wait to see who emerges on top there because let's face it these 30 somethings they won't stick around forever and then there's a big gap in the mid 20s we have Rapport and Duda but they've never been fixtures in the top 10 so the world top spots they will be up, up for, for grabs. grabs Magnus already slowing down a bit and <coughs> not chess skill wise but activity wise and let's see how long the likes of Fabi, Hikaru, Ding Nepomnishi stick around. It, it's interesting because if we think about the world of chess, let's say 23 years ago or 24 years ago, the, the top players dominating at the time were all in their late 20s, early 30s. Were they? Yeah. So 24 years ago, that's 2000. Yeah. Mm, Kasparov was so, yeah. like uh, late 30s. Late, yeah. Kasparov. Think of Vichy, think of Mickey, think of Peter, think of... Um, I mean, it wasn't a group of 19, 20-year-olds, is what I'm trying to say. The guys that were dominating chess 20 years ago were not 19 and 20. They were 25 plus. But it's the same now. Well... <laughs> I feel as though there's more young guys in the conversation than yeah, there used that's, to be. Uh, that's more the thing that we have this very strong generation of the guys born in 1990 or around that and then we have this almost 15 year gap and now we have all these yeah. guys from born in 2004-2005 approaching the top. Sickening. How do they get so good? I don't know. Internet. These kids. <laughs> the internet. They have the internet now. Internet kids. That's true. Digital natives. That's right, digital natives. Although it, some of them, I'm not sure of all of them, but they don't strike me as super digital. Like I don't see Vincent on his phone or on his computer nonstop. Gukesh, they said, didn't even have access to a computer until he was a grandmaster. That's probably an exaggeration, but didn't focus on learning openings and so on and so forth. It's not just internet kits, it's, right. uh, it's the mix. Yeah, uh, I think that um, I agree. I think uh, a lot of them are not digitally obsessed. Although, of course, in their preparation, they all do use the computer extensively. I, I, mm -hmm. I don't imagine these guys sitting over a, a wooden board very often and trying out ideas. That's it. I can imagine it with Vincent and Peter, but perhaps some of the others, I, I'm not so sure. Well, it's fairly common. There's not always time, but especially if you have a helper, it usually good idea to bring a wooden board and move the pieces there because you have to make the moves over a wooden board and you commit them to memory so much easier than if you just click through files on a computer screen but of course such a time saver to click through things in a file that is not always happening but in general it's considered to be good practice what's going on there still speeches yep still speeches I think that's Wolfgang Grenke talking at the moment um, with Sven Noppes and, and they're just having chat on stage they're having a quick chat quick introduction I'm not sure that's Wolfgang Grenke but I really can't tell from here I think it is I'm almost certain it is mm -hmm. although the yeah um, and yeah this is gonna be a great day of, of chess um, I I like coming to tournaments like this because you see a lot of old faces as well. I know you're a, you hate people, but sure. I, I don't mind people. Oh, and nice. there's going to be a, a lot of old friends knocking around here. You're, you know, for example, your good friend, Mr. Dodgy, he's, he's going to be around. All right. Is he an old friend of yours? He's an old friend of, well. So who are, you, who are your old friends? Who do you look forward to running into? Well, uh, I, I saw the list. There were... A, I don't, nobody in, in particular, I guess, but just 
Wow. Some old zero names. Zero names. Zero names. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make anybody favorites, but. Um, you notice some of my teammates are here as well from Norderstedt. Mm -hmm. They're playing. Um, I, you know, you just run into people. Macaulay is here, for example. There you go. So There's your a, your dearest old friends are Macaulay and the uh, Norderstedt guys. No, but you know some. Well, I'm just curious. Uh, but Macaulay. What is about here? Magnus? Magnus and you go way back. We do. Yeah. Magnus, uh, I've not spoken to since I've been here. I'm not. I think after yesterday, he was probably. Uh, a little bit upset, so you got to let him cool off. But uh -huh. uh, I'll say hello to my I'll say hello to any anybody wow. who I've had good relations with. Anybody I've had poor relations with, I'll also say hello to. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Be a lot of loves. Diplomacy. <laughs> <laughs> Diplomacy 101. Um, Who's that speaking now? The guy talking now. I'm not entirely sure who that is. Me neither. We which need to is zoom a, in. Which is, of course, unfortunate. Uh, but we are way behind time. Um, what we, time is it? We're half an hour late. Yeah, this is very un German, by the way. Uh, being have half have an hour late. Have a German train? That's, that's no, a that great is, result. That's Probably. true. That is very German. But being uh, half an hour late uh, in Germany is capital punishment in many places. Not true. No? No. No, like, of course, it's understandable here with the logistics and That's all these true. people and if they say it starts at 6.30, that means speeches and so on. But I'm worried about our players because they were starting at 3 p.m. That's already a big jump to start at 6.30. You have to shuffle your biorhythm around a little bit. Now we, we get like, let's say, an hour delay they might be here till till midnight, and some of the guys might fall asleep. <laughs> like Ding strikes me as like us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, Ding, I'm being told, is a night owl, so he's right. probably fine. Most chess players are, but mm. it's still very tricky to change your starting time around during yes. the tournament four hours later, because normally yeah, you're tired after the games, you go to sleep, and then you end up waking up in the morning. Now they've had to keep the energy levels high all day long. Yeah, um, if you're fit, if you're in good shape, like, well, at least I think a few of these guys, I think Vincent is in pretty good shape. Uh, Magnus, of course. MBL, at least he was. Uh, what are you doing? You're, you're <laughs> ranking their fitness levels? Yeah, I'm trying Vincent to Vincent is number one? No, I think Magnus is number one, uh -huh. still. Uh, Magnus is number one. Number two is difficult to say. I will say that I think Danny Fridman probably is not, you know, the, the, a gym goer like Magnus. Maybe not, but he has a very good chess stamina. That's true. He's an Ironman. He's used to these 12 hour a day rapid events, open tournaments with double rounds. Like, I mean, this chess fitness, it's a mysterious thing. I don't actually have the answer. I'm very curious because it's not just physical fitness, but this chess stamina to be able to sit there for a long time and concentrate. I'm curious what the secret potion is and something I think about a lot. Not coming to any results, but I do think about it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, uh, difficult, uh, dif I mean, tricky topic. I think a lot more research is still required um, to know just how, how, how to measure uh, chest fitness. How has it, has it been for you? You're historically a fit guy. Do you feel your fitness levels affect your yes. chest performance? Yes, 100%, 100%. When I'm fit and really feeling good, I can play it. A solid 23.50 and when I'm not feeling so good I'm back down to 23.25. I hear you. No, I, uh, yeah, I do believe, I do believe, I think more than anything if I really think about my, when I play my worst it's when I'm super tired. Being incredibly tired. That's it. Just tired. Tired and perhaps some other things have happened in the day. You're not in the best of moods. 
it's very difficult to play optimal chess, whereas if you're well rested, feeling, you know, I think vitamin, vitamin D, a bit of sun always helped me. I've won three tournaments in my life and they've all been beach tournaments. What does that say? You play a lot of beach tournaments? <laughs> it means that you know, being able to go out, go to the beach, go for a swim, that's when I feel good about my chess. Uh -huh. So your advice is not to be tired and distracted. Correct. Ideally. Correct. Pretty good advice. Yeah. Sven is back to addressing the crowd. Who are the players in the open? I haven't checked actually. I've seen Arjun Arigaisi. Yes. Like 2750 or something is the top seat. Yes. Who else do we have? I'm going to have a look now. Uh, let's have a look here. So we've got. Uh, wow. Well, Trying, trying to navigate this site. The Open Spieler. It's the classic. Useless. I know take there your are, time, take your time. I know there are at least, uh, here we go, underground. So we've got Eric AC. Alexei Sarana is here. Oh, well. European team champion. Yep. Fedosev, mm -hmm. Shugirov, somebody called Hans Neiman. Do you know him? Wow, Hans is here. Never heard of him. Do you know him? I do know him. Okay. El Nino, mm -hmm. David Anton. Um, I look forward to catching up thinking with Thinking of a different El Nino. <laughs> David Anton. Kirill Shevchenko, Ivan Saric, Matthias Blubaum. Not familiar. Uh, Raunag Sadwani, Pishot Burkic, Dima Kolars is here, Abi Mishra, Rasmus Svana, San Jaime Santos. Oh, Jaime Santos has really dropped in rating. I think he was pushing 2700 not so long ago, actually. Uh -huh. um, Frederick Svana, unbelievable. Frederick, the brother of Rasmus, also uh, 2700. Both Svana Both Svana brothers on. 2600 plus, Gata is here, Rina Jumbayev, Christopher Yu, the list goes on, there are th literally hundreds of... There are literally thousands. Literally thousands and literally over 100 GMs, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so it's gonna be, gonna be fun to see who wins the Open. Yeah, we'll focus on the games and the yeah. classic, but of course, online you can follow all the Open games if you want to as well. But what we want to see is our boy, Vinny K, the local hero, face Magnus Carlsen in round number five. So this is the midpoint of the qualifying stage of the tournament. They play 10 rounds total. Both Magnus and Vincent on two out of four. So it's sort of a big game to see which direction either of them will go. Yeah, it's a massive game. Um, massive game also for, as Jan pointed out, the histor histor historical uh, results be between them. Magnus with a m just an overwhelming head-to-head uh, -head statistics. He's just crushing Vincent. And Vincent has to turn the tables at some point, unless you just end up having somebody like Magnus as your as we say in English, your bogey player, where you just, you know, for example, I remember, I think, is it Judith had Vladimir Kramnik, just could never, never manage to beat Vlad at all, ever, in any no, sort. No, she struggled against Kasparov, Anna and Kramnik, and again, those are all pretty good players. Too. Yeah, I think Kramnik in particular, though, she had a, she had a big well, problem. Those three with. in particular. Yeah. Did you, is there a player that you've always just struggled against? Um, no. Oh, okay. You just... You just did okay against everybody. Yeah. Okay. What's going on there? So, uh, it looked like Sven left the stage. Oh, there we see Wolfgang Kranke and Hans Walter Schmidt, who used to organize another gigantic tournament in Germany. The, um, <laughs> what were those called? Were those called the Chess Classic as well in Frankfurt and then Mainz? 
The Mind's Chess Classic sounds yeah. correct, yeah. That was another tremendous event. So two men who've done a lot for German chess right there, embracing. Still, Thir guys, 38 would, would you minutes mind late. getting off the stage? Like yeah. you, can, you can talk backstage. They have coffee, I'm told. <laughs> Let's start. Yeah. 38 minutes is, uh, is, is even for German standards, we're now getting into, are we able to sue the rail company's territory? No, you gotta wait for an hour, then you get 25% of your, of your money back. I didn't know so that works. actually. An hour? 20, and what if it's two hours? Two hours is 50%. And three hours? 50%. Do you ever get 100%? No, 50 oh. is the max. Max. So I always get very upset when I'm 59 minutes late. <laughs> Do you take a little screenshot with your, like, a cam with your phone, yeah? Do you have to send it off? Do you actually send it off to get the 25%? Um, yeah. yeah. You, you do, don't you? an online form. Oh my goodness. Times are tough, ladies and gentlemen, that is for sure. Uh, the players Hans are Walter, seated. Get out of there. No, the players are not there. The main event players Where are Where are they? Are they still trying to make their way through? Incredible. Poor Ding, like, signed 800 autographs by now. Yeah. Well, at least it's a, it's a shorter name. Imagine you're called, I don't know, Karana, Nakamura, Nepomishi, Ali Reza, and you have to sign. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I never thought of that. You know. We should explain, by the way, I guess people know this, but Ding is his last name. Correct. Liren is the first name, but in China, and I think in India it's similar, although there it <coughs> depends a bit on the region. You typically write the surname first, that's why it's Ding Liren, not Liren Ding. And in Hungary, they always go with the last, the Leko surname. Peter. Leko yeah. Peter. Shout out to Leko Peter, if you are watching, sir. He was very, he wrote me some nice messages yesterday as well. Big fan. We, uh, we miss you, Peter. Wishing you a quick recovery. Okay, Sven is back on the mic. Um, he can't let go. And we've got two young help us here. Are these kids? Not entirely sure. To be honest, in a few years they could be yours. I, I would assume they already have parents. Yes. No, I'm, I'm not saying they will be yours, but your Jonas and your, your daughter, I could see them looking like that in a, in a few years. Uh -huh. Jan's a, a great dad, ladies and gentlemen, by the way. Got to see him with his kids and his wife. Lovely. I met Jan when he was just a, you know, a raging bachelor. No, family man. I'm proud of you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? So we've uh, zoomed in on my, my neighborhood, my, my kids' names. Like, what, what else you got? Um. Well, <laughs> that's all I mean. I don't. Um, um, let's make, get started. What about you? I any wanna have any luck with, uh, well, I, with the ladies? Or? I've historically <clears throat> been very lucky with who I've met. And just, they've got very unlucky, basically. Oh. That's just the, the bottom line. Uh, I hope to be one day a dad like you. And like my brother, my brother's a dad now. He's, so I really enjoy How old are you nowadays? You're not a spring chicken no, anymore. No, the, the, the clock is ticking. The, talk, the, 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 the clock is certainly. I'll be 38 in a few days. Wow, that's shocking. Shocking, huh? Yeah. I remember receiving a phone call from you when I was in my late 20s. Huh? It was somewhere in London, you said, hey, we're starting a company. Do you fancy maybe coming over and doing some chess content? And I said, yeah, sure. Yeah, nothing's changed. I called you two days ago. <laughs> uh, come over. 
Yeah. Every 10 years. I'll give you Every 10 years. But I'll ghost in between. Uh, so, uh. Jan is still the, the number one ghoster of all my contacts. Nah, Sven Lopez is a bigger ghoster than me. Oh, that's true. Sven Lopez actually is a bigger ghoster than you. Jan is a grandmaster level ghoster. Won't hear from him for... No, but I'll reply if there's if something to talk about. Yeah. But uh, normally you're just sending me not safe for work stuff and then what am I going to say? I'm sending you very un-PC stuff and you just don't Fresh reply. much stuff, yeah. yeah. No, I just forward it to Mr. Dochi. <laughs> Take a <laughs> screenshot, forward it, and my job is done here. There's Daniel Friedman. All right, we're getting one of the players to the stage. That's good news. One down, five to go. Yeah, Mr. Friedman. Great guy, great player. Played him a few weeks ago. He got, he absolutely crushed me. That was fun. And he's playing white today against Ding. Dressed up for the, for the big stage. Yeah. The world champion, you, you, you make an effort for the world champion. Mm -hmm. And uh, here he is. Le man, le myth, le legend, as they say in France. That's what they say. Maxime Vachier Le Grub. One of the nicest guys you'll have the pleasure to meet and hang out with. Yeah. 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 Mr. Rapport, also super nice, but don't know him as well. So less nice than Maxime? Not less nice, just I don't know Richie that well oh, compared to Maxime, who I've spent quite a lot of time with. Uh -huh. That's gonna, that should be a very interesting little tussle. With so when did you and Maxime last hang out? <clears throat> We last hung out, I think it was in Dublin, not that long ago. Oh. Ah. What do you do? We, uh, we went there for, actually I think it was his birthday, a joint birthday. Um, we hung out, we ate, we drank. Wow. I spent a lot of time with the Frenchies. I went to by, by Kilkenny last year, the Kilkenny Weekender. But Maxime couldn't come to that, unfortunately. Is that Hans Niemann? That is Hans Niemann. I have no idea why he's on the stage. Maybe he thinks he's in the tournament. He, he deserves to be in the tournament. I'm sure he will proclaim this, that he, he should really he be should up there. He should just sit down. Yeah, he should just sit down in Magnus's chair and just say, this is my chair. Mm -hmm. There's Vincent Keimer. Looks like the players are getting introduced one by one. That's right. Vincent. That's a bit rough, actually. It's the Everybody's arriving, and you have to play Magnus with this gigantic audience straight away. I don't think he's going to be too phased by it. Here he is, the former world champion. Still, still hard to say that. Well, he's the rapid world champion. This is a that's rapid true. tournament, so you can oh, call him true, Actually, that is a good point. The world number one. He's occupied the world number one spot now for 11 years straight without ever being budged. Quite the achievement. Huh? And you can see there, adjusting his pieces. I have no idea what kind of uh, mood he's gonna be in today. Uh, Wolfgang after. Granke playing pawn to d4 for Vincent. Excellent move. Good move. And most likely the move that Vincent's gonna play. Oh, he's put it back. Uh, Maybe he'll, he'll uh, play one knight at three, e three, ah, c four. Okay. Could do. No, he might play d four. He might play d four. I'll be very curious to see what kind of, as I say, what kind of mood Magnus is in after yesterday's really disappointing uh, day for him. Uh -huh. Is he going to just go completely? So after the disappointing day, will you think his mood is good or not so good? No, but you know, sometimes you want to react violently. Sometimes you want to just uh, react solemnly and just just play just play some normal moves. And sometimes you think, you know what? Uh, I've had enough. I'm 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 coming out to play and mixing things up. I have no idea. Magnus is capable of all of it. I would say that Magnus is capable. There are, not everybody can just do that. Like, I can't imagine Ding just coming out and, and going absolutely nuts one day. Huh. So what 
how would Magnus go nuts against? Well, you can play Magnus. something slightly more offbeat. You can play something slightly more aggressive, like I don't know. Play his knight to f6. He might play Pawn Dutch to c4. or something. Pawn to e6. Okay. So far, knight so to c3. Good. Vincent inviting the so-called Nimzo Indian, but Magnus often goes d5, saying nah. He's no played Nimzo. c5. And there you go. There's the there's the madness. He's going for the Benoni. I told you guys. I, I, I know, I know, I know, Magnus. <laughs> you didn't tell us actually. <laughs> you were saying he could or he could play solidly. You were uh, yep. uh, uh, covering all the bases. But here we go. We get a Benoni. And Vincent, which is not bailing out, plays d5 immediately. Let's oh. see which system Vincent goes for. I'm not sure he'll go e4 here. No? No, I think he'll go knight f3 first. But I don't know. And the Benoni is. Yeah. He's not going knight f3, he's deciding between... Oh, I'm wrong again! Wow, I, I need to go... Maybe, just maybe. Deciding between knight f3 yeah. and e4. Yeah. Knight f3 is a strange move order, because typically but this is the big advantage white has here, that he's not committed to knight f3 yet, so he can play systems with either e4 and f4, or e4, and putting the knight here. But Vincent, who doesn't play the Nimzo move order very often, he more often plays knight f3 here, probably is transposing to a system he knows with the knight already committed there. And ironically, in the Friedman Ding Liren game as well, we've got a reversed Benoni. So it's wow. Benoni round. Do you know that Benoni means son of sorrow? Apparently it does, yeah. Oh, some theory debate here. In yeah. the Carlson game, queen a4, bishop d7, queen b3, and black is supposed to go b5. Yeah, Let's right. see how well Magnus knows his Benoni. Vincent is saying, I'm, I'm not backing down. Yeah, let's have a look at this. So, Vincent gives a check, Magnus blocks, Vincent brings the queen back, and now, so this is very top to lure the bishop here, mm -hmm. if knight bd7, you can take the pawn. So, bishop d7, queen to b3, pawn to b5. Now black, white has a choice between taking here and taking on d6, both leading to big masses. And as far as I know, black is okay here, so... People have stopped doing this queen a4, queen b3, but That's maybe right. Vincent is also saying, you know what, I think you're bluffing, sir. I don't think you know all this stuff, so I'll put you to the test. But Vincent's taking a moment here, which might be bad news for him, because you don't want to enter this if you don't know details. Then I would question why he blitzed out queen a4 check, because this we get. But no, he, he does take and queen b6. Magnus so knows a little something. Surprisingly hard to catch Magnus, and he does know a little something here and there. I, I've, I've said it for years and years and years. I think people underestimate him in the opening, and he just knows a lot more than people think. Yeah, he does. Yeah, bishop b5 is the main move, and now you can sit, play castles or c4. I think I've had this at least once. Um, it often leads to the same thing, but if you're not well prepared here as white, it could get very hairy very quickly. Mm. The black pawns on b5 and c5 start to roll. And uh, bishop b5 castles, Magnus still well in books. So it's gonna, it's really a, a book war at the moment. Yeah, I used to click these lines e3, then there's c4 yeah. or b4. And typically, if you keep pushing the button, it ends with black surviving as always. But it's gonna be a question how well Vincent knows this, if he can ask a question or if the board will be burning. So when you're supposed to go e3, e4 would be a little too loose here, then you get hit with c4 and queen c2, I guess, knight a6, mm. and your pieces don't really make, make a lot of sense. So you want the pawn on e3 so that this bishop is not as loose here. Yeah, this is uh, definitely a I think e3, c4, and then the queen goes to d1. That was the line. No? Yeah, and if b4, knight e2, but it looks awfully clumsy for white. But. Mm, pawn up. Nice centered pawn up. So black has to do something. <coughs> if we get one more move, we're in good shape. Yeah, rook c8 followed by c3 is an idea I remember. I think I looked at this with Fabi, actually. I'm sure. <laughs> I really do. When Fabi had his Benoni moment. 
And you can see on the stage there, by the way, you've got some top players from the Open tournament as well. That's Hans Niemann. That is Hans Niemann with his back to us. Do you think there's a special Hans Niemann board with a camera just on him, like <coughs> Magnus often has this TV board? That's right. I should have one. Yeah. Camera and metal detector required. Yeah. No. Too soon? Yeah. Too soon. Okay. Uh, now, let's see how Hans... I mean, wouldn't it be great if Hans won the tournament and he would play in the main event next year? That would be something. Yeah, Magnus would be thrilled. <laughs> yeah. Do you think they talk? I doubt it. Yeah, me too. He's going to walk past the board. I wonder what the tension is like. Can we see that? Can we zoom out here and see? No. No, no we can't. We can see uh, Arjun Irigasi there in the grey blazer. We can see Alexei Sarana on the other side. Can we? Yeah, down the end, two from the end. Wearing the oh, black. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There he is. That's right. So some top, top players in the house. Huh? And who, whom are they playing? Is this, what's the pairing system in the open? It's one versus 1350? Right. Not rating, but seat. Yeah, so I think they're going to be playing 2,100, 2,200 players in the first round, I would guess. There are so many. I don't know what the pairing system is sometimes. They use some accelerated thing with such big fields. I don't know. Vince has played E3, the critical move. Needed a moment here to probably recall. Now Magnus has a choice between C4 and B4. And now Magnus also has to show us if he was mildly bluffing or if he has this all worked out. The best guess is he has a file somewhere and he's looked at it one day, but probably not right before the game. But I could be wrong, because Vin Vincent, he likes repeating his lines. And if Vincent has played this before against the Benoni, then of course Magnus will be ready. It's the first game of the day, after all. Want to see for plate? The queen pretty much has to come back to d1 here. Yeah, it goes to c2 now. It can be hit by bishop f5. That doesn't help. And this way would be disastrous, I guess. Maybe 6 or right, 5 So yeah, we went back. b4 plate. Here we go. Now the big question is where, where the horsey jumps. Here. I can't here. imagine him putting it back on b1, that's for sure. Uh -huh. That said, you do need 210p more to develop the light square bishop if you put it on e2. Uh -huh. Hot take of the day. I've had a lot today, apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you're you. on fire. Thank you. If you hadn't noticed, ladies and gentlemen, that's Jan being sarcastic. No. Oh, no? All right. It's a problem. I don't... People never believe I'm giving a genuine compliment. That's because you've never given a genuine compliment. That could be a reason. <laughs> Let's have a look at the other Benoni. Yeah. Of course, we'll keep an eye on the Keimer Carlsen game. Daniel Friedman. He's saying, I would also like a Benoni, but I will have two extra tempi, and you will have played e6 with your bishop. Still boxed in, so of course, this is a way different version. And the move h6, <coughs> slightly rare as far as I know, but of course Ding will have prepared this. Daniel, not surprised, takes in bishop f4. Knows the stuff. Now knight e5 is an option, so probably black goes bishop d6 to control that square. Let's see what Ding is up to. Or will he go g5? Yeah, he's not going to go g5. Not today. But interesting kind of reverse Benoni, think Daniel is doing just fine. Nothing too much to talk about just yet. Hmm. Should we go to the final game? Nah, it's French. It's oh, a and French? a French opening too. <laughs> the the Naver. Yeah. Uh, Rapport likes his line, plays it quite a bit, but here, 
bishop to d3. This I know. Wow, this is very unusual. No, this is the main move. But oh, is it? Sorry, cd4 uh, and then queen 4 Knight e2. Now you go knight e2. This is yeah. also established. But after bishop d3, Rapport goes queen a5 wow. now, which is sort of rare, at least to me. The point is after knight e2, you go c4 and trap the bishop. But after bishop d2, he also goes c4. It's too subtle for me. Why do you go queen c7 and then after bishop d3, queen a5? So he gains a tempo back if he wants to play c4. And he likes this close structure. Deep stuff. It's a sideline, but trying to get a game. You have to play rook g8 now to cover this poor pawn. Is this good, Richard? Maxime Whoa. has won a game in the Wienerver before he beat Jan de Pomerschi and the candidates in a key game when Maxime Vashilagrab was the leader of the candidates together with Jan de Pomerschi. Not so long ago, it's during the pandemic, weren't we, or the start of the pandemic, weren't we doing commentary in the Ziekaterinburg and then Maxime won this game? That's and right. Then it was put on hold. That's right. We were in the off. We were in the studio in Hamburg. No, I was in my basement. Oh, sorry. But you did cut. No, it was. Or was that the? What are you talking post pandemic? Yes. No. Nope. Pre pandemic. Mm -hmm. I thought we did some commentary together. <coughs> we did. I was remote. Ah, you were just remote. Okay. Yeah. So who are you? Anyway, um, <laughs> it's been a while ago. It's really been a long time. Anyway, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Rapport going for this kind of structure, closed structure. Um, and the current position looks okay for black to my eyes, but a4, knight c6, knight f3, bishop d7, castles h6. Looks totally reasonable. Yeah, Maxim just developed in sort of a standard fashion, but maybe the way to punish this, that's the advantage of course of playing these sidelines, as normally people won't be too well acquainted with them, was some cunning moves here. Like, okay, Compi says a4 is okay, but now he's giving lines that I can't even explain, like queen f4 followed by bishop g4. Like h4 is fairly standard there. I'm actually a bit surprised Maxime didn't do it because you see them pushing the h4, all kinds of situations. But the You're telling me you've never seen queen f4 followed by bishop g4 in these closed French structures? And you call yourself a grandmaster? Yes. Okay. Just so we're clear. Mm -hmm. No, I have no idea what queen f4, bishop g4 is about. That is next level stuff. Yeah, I actually are. don't even get it at all. This is much more normal, but yeah, you can get into so trouble right here. Yeah. yeah, for black. Somehow, yeah, the short castles didn't look to be asking so many questions. No, you can you can get into some serious trouble here as black because um, as white, as white, white sorry, as white. Yeah, so rook g eight, f six, g five. Not even that. Up. Yeah, just 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 pushing, just just starting the push. Can get yeah, I don't think you want to go g five because the pawns aren't really moving. Any more after that, but preparing f6 or f5. You might even not right even moment. have to prepare it in some positions. You can just jettison the pawn. Hmm. Very interesting stuff. Now, of course, long way to go in that one. Um, Seen also played very quickly, and clearly he was out of book. He made some, according to the compi, subpar moves. Mm -hmm. Why blitz out all this stuff? Rook fb1 played, totally natural. Now Richard is just going to castle long, which he already does. And this is where you reach the point as a white player on this side of the ball, on this, against the system, where all of your previous moves have kind of been straightforward, automatic, and now you need a plan. And rook b5, queen c7 is the first thing you look at. Um, and I wonder if there, after rook b5, queen c7, bishop c1 is what MBL will play with the idea of rerouting the bishop to yeah. a3. 
makes a lot of sense, but it's sort of slow, so he has to think about how to deal with f6 or f5. Yeah, f5, and now, I mean, in principle, I don't want to take that, so I would probably put the queen on h3. Uh -huh. But, yeah, comp super complicated. Comp is pretty happy with Comp that. likes knight a5, which attacks the rook, the rook comes back, back, and it likes rook df8. No idea. No, he's preparing. Some more reshuffling. That's what Richie likes about this. He has a compact structure he can shuffle around. And here, of course, there's yeah. a lot of looming danger with this pawn push. And the white pieces are slightly misplaced. This bishop is beautiful, but it doesn't seem to be doing enough by itself. So it looks like the opening went a little wrong for Maxime there. And Rapport. <coughs> Who's played the French? Every now and then. Also advised Ding to play the French during the World Championship match against Nepomnesi. Uh, he played the French ones as a surprise weapon. So, Richard and the French are simpatico. Yeah. Let's go back to the Magnus game because we did get an answer from Vincent and he did put the knight on b1. He said, I don't want to put the knight on e2 because I have to move it again anyway, so I'm going to put it on b1. Magnus now protects his loose pawn on c4 with bishop b5. And it's over to Vincent, who I think we can reasonably confidently say is probably close to out of book now. Or at least he hasn't, <coughs> he hasn't looked at this position for a while, I wouldn't have thought. Yeah, I think it's still sort of theory. So he probably has it in some file, but it's not what you check every morning. You're, you've been known as a sugar for analysis. In a way... I don't know which position is easier to play. But at least the next move for black is sort of easy. Well, Vincent now has a decision. Do you go bishop e2? Do you go a3? Do you go a4? Do you go bishop d4? Might be two. Bunch of candidate moves. Really is a bunch of. a lot of moves here. And. Well, Magnus having a good thing as well. Um, I personally think that this could be uh, this could be one of those time trouble base games. I feel like both players are gonna, or at least Vincent is gonna, is really gonna have to spend a lot of time uh -huh. figuring this out. It's not the sort of position you can just play automatically. Uh -huh. So you think Vincent will end up low on time? I think Vincent like will be in time trouble. In every game of his. Well, it's not completely true, is it? Sorry. No. He's a time travel addict. No. He has one weakness, one addiction. It's time travel. If only that were the only addiction one could be addicted to, the world would be a better place. I don't place. think Vincent has any other addictions. No. He's not even addicted to, I don't know, watching TV. No. He just, just opening trees. Just opening <laughs> trees are his only opening addiction. Opening trees. And he's played oh. a4. Bishop a6. Bishop went back. And what did he just do now? Well, he's going to bring the horsey. Knight d2 played. Okay. Uh -huh. So he's still sort of in book. Knight d2. He calls his tree. Rook c8 will be played. Uh -huh. Protecting the pawn. And rook c1 and c3. Exciting. It's actually very, very tricky. So knight takes d5 is bad, then yeah. we take, and we take on c4, yeah. we stabilize. Yeah. Now there's always a check on d4, so you have to keep this, this trump card alive, rook c8, and white oh. should try to get it. Maybe he was bluffing us, Vincent, he was just trying to recall his lines. Yeah. And c3, and Magnus also... Well, it's the only move, so even if he doesn't know, he has to do it, because if not, this pawn just gets taken. Now, yeah. b takes c, also looks forced. Yeah, because if bishop takes a6, he takes d2 is a very unfortunate... Fischer In between check. Uh -huh. So you have to take on c3. Magnus now will probably take on f1. Yeah, it's a bit clumsy to recapture no matter how you do it. Probably knight, so we reserve and castling rights for later. 
And now you just, you're two pawns down as black, but you just carry on. You go knight bd7, so I don't care. Amazing. Bishop d4, mm. queen a6. Yeah, this king in the center. I mean, things aren't easy. And white would probably have to return some pawns while finishing development. Big theoretical debate here. Really is. <clears throat> Vincent's a bit, he's a big Harry Potter guy. I'm not sure if that's an addiction. Oh, what, big what, sorry? Harry Potter. Oh, Harry so, Potter. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I think, I think it is an addiction, right? Could be. There, I'm sure there are some Harry Potter addicts out there. Have you read the Harry Potters? No. No. I've seen the movies. Okay. I tried to read them to my, to my kids, but... Are they yeah. too young still, probably? No, they said this is for babies. <laughs> really? No. No, maybe they're a bit too young. Yeah, still. a bit yeah. too young. But it, yeah. I'm a big, uh, big fan of uh, J.K. Rowling. Mm -hmm. At Lawrence Trent, <laughs> I am. That's okay. Yeah. I'm all right. Listen. How do you I can be <laughs> No, sorry, go ahead. Tell no, me. no, no, I was just saying. I think she's a talented writer. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneur. Big fan. Um, Queen F4 in NVL. He played your move just five moves later. It's too late now. Hitting the F7 pawn. Wowzers. Compi is not impressed. So that, that's a difficult move to Get play. out of here. Nah. Rook DF8, Queen happen. H5. And Although just. Richard, he, he likes his pawns, but here, black is just too active, isn't it? G4, yeah. Bishop E8. Why would I have to play G4? That's Why a very, so bad? very tough move. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you can just leave it because G4 is the threat. H5? No, it doesn't quite work. Knight takes G5. Wow, I'll be very, very impressed if, uh, if Richard finds G5 here. I'm wondering, the first move that comes to mind is this, just to cover the pawn. Then he wants this, or what's his point? Not sure. Actually, I'm not sure, because when the bishop gets to a3, then when you go f5, e takes f6 is not even a move. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, you can throw in bishop d6. Yeah, but, okay. But then you can no longer take, take on right. You have to do it directly. They changed the rules. Mm -hmm. Rapper, are you thinking about it? He looks interested. <coughs> Yeah, I think he might do it. Another hot take. Yeah, he might <laughs> do it or he might not do it. Those are the two options. Hot takes everywhere. Whenever you say hot take, I think of hot cake. Huh. You know, this, there are some nice hot cakes. Are you a cold cake? You're a cold kuchen kind of guy? Not a big cake guy. No, not a big cake guy? No. Oh, I, I had my, you down as a... My, my brownie for dessert. Ooh, yeah. Cakes. Cakes no good? I'm an old man. You gotta, gotta stay away at some point. Mar marble cake. Lemon cake. Carrot cake. Cheesecake. In this area of Germany, we have the Schwarzwälder Kirschtorte. Are you familiar with Schwarzwälder Kirschtorte? The black uh, cherry... No, Schwarzwald, this hall we're in is actually called the Schwarzwaldhalle. It's the Black Forest. Black Forest cherry cake? Black Forest cherry cake. No, I've not it's tried it. Have you tried it? Yeah. Okay. Should we have some tomorrow morning? No. Okay. Vincent took with the king. What a sicko. He can no longer castle now. But okay, he's not losing that much time, and 
you can either castle by hand later or the slightly uglier but faster g3 king g2 and what's magnus going to do knight bd7 let's assume develops compi says bishop takes f6 i'd hate to give that bishop so pretty can i keep it i'd keep it queen a6 Ooh. Or you want to give up the pawn, just... A bunch of pawns, no? Yeah. The computer somehow equalizes, but... Why a6. is queen takes a4 not the move here? It's too greedy. Oh, I stabilize. Uh-huh. And... There is problems. Knight takes d5, rook a1, and we win material. <laughs> that's, an, that's a very pretty tactic. Huh. Wow, okay, so... Let's see what he does. Compi says bishop takes f6, but it strikes me as very loose. Tough move. No, I mean, it's one of the two. You take your bishop d4 to me. Bishop d4 just looks more natural if he's out of book, which I assume by now he is. Magnus, not sure. Magnus really hasn't spent a lot of time. He's All his moves have been, like, semi-forced ever yeah. since entering this sharp line, but... Normally, once, it, once he has to think, he thinks. Magnus is not the type like Aronian to, you know, blitz out the first 40 moves and pre pretend it's all preparation. Normally, if he has a decision, he will take his time. Are you saying that Aronian pretends? Sometimes, like, sometimes he just keeps playing very quickly and you're not sure, is it prep or mm. is it inspiration? Like, some of the top guys do that. And it's very unpleasant, too, because you don't have time to think. But... Because there's a risk of making a subpar move by the way. Magnus having a little nap. <laughs> he's looking up maybe. He's looking uh, at the screen. He's searching his memory palace. Hans Niemann. Are those the two most famous chess players in the world or not anymore? Um, a year ago certainly or whenever that was. Two years ago. Difficult I, I to say. I lost track of time. Uh, yeah, certainly at some point. I mean, we a few skits made the Daily Show and various other yeah. high-profile shows. So, but maybe as Magnus hasn't been so active, maybe now it's Nakamura Niemann. Yeah, that was an attempt at humor. <clears throat> um, no, yeah, I guess Hans is a bit out of the public eye. Has been playing a lot, but mainly open tournaments. Just as he's here, so he's still very much committed to the game. But who are the most famous chess players in the world? How do you rate it even nowadays? Like Gotham Chess, yeah. the Botas sisters, yeah. they're more famous than, they let's are. say, I don't know, Fabi. Oh, yeah. Fabi, he's out there. No, but I think the, the, the streamers, the, uh, the YouTube uh, guys are, are definitely Definitely the, I mean, Gotham, I think probably outside of Magnus and maybe Hikaru is number three. Shout out to Levi. Uh, yeah, the Botas is, I mean, Andrea was in Berlin DJing in a rave set a few weeks ago. Amazing, super talented. So the game is getting cooler. Mm. So they say. Mm -hmm. Speaking of cool, Richard Rapport. Oof. He played g5? Went g5. Damn. Maxim took. Yeah. Can't bluff Maxim. And now Richard is trying to figure out where to go from here. And also, Maxim loves a pawn. Yeah. Yeah, he loves he, bishops. He, he, loves, he loves a pawn. I, Mm, I'm not sure he's. Uh, he really yes. likes his two bishops' pawns. I'm not sure because he also loves initiative. So I'm not sure how much of a pawn grabber he is. But here, of course, there was no way back. I think uh, in this position, Richard is deciding whether to go knight f5 or rook f8 first, if it makes a difference. Uh -huh. So because maybe after knight f5, you have the additional option of. Something like rook g7, and then maybe you can get in a quick g4. I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe. 
there's a few little details here that I think uh, Ricard is trying to work out. Uh -huh. The most natural, of course, is just to go rook f8, followed by bishop e8 at some point, and g4, and knight f5, and just try and get it rolling. Which reminds me of that song by Limp Biscuit, Rolling. Ah, I thought that you were taking us back to Harry Potter. No, no. I was thinking of uh, that song by Limp Biscuit. Uh -huh. Do you remember the one? No. Oh, okay. It was called Rolling. Uh-huh. Roll the girl, like, keep rolling, rolling, rolling. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. That's the one. You and Fred Durst, are you, you guys close? Yes, actually, as it turns out, um, no. But that was the first album I ever bought with my own money. Wow. I can't For me, it was Roxette Joyride. Was it? Of course. Join the Joyride. Be a Joyrider. What year was that? Ninety-one. Ninety-one. Could be. You remember going into the store and buying the CD? Yeah. CD. Or uh, the MC. Was it a CD? No, it was a cassette. It was a cassette? An old man. Wow. Some people watching this are like, what's a cassette? I know. Imagine some people watching the stream right now have never owned a CD. Everything's been digital. Wow. Crazy, huh? That's, that's a crazy thought. You should tweet about that. That's deep stuff. And Vincent, he he not hasn't as got attached any to the bishop. As I thought. <laughs> he, he hasn't he hasn't got any cassettes by Roxanne. I can tell you that. Roxette, not Roxanne. Roxanne, Roxette rather. Uh, Roxanne was Sting. Roxanne was Sting. Did you know that Sting played? No, nah, we should we shouldn't get into. Did he play chess? Uh, no. Ah. Oh. Um, there's too much action on the chessboard. Okay. Like My B seven. Vincent didn't go bishop d four. He took on f6, which is the best move. I just thought it looked loosey, but he's good at chess, so he can get away with it. And Magnus, he's still thinking about which way to recapture, if he should recapture at all, if he should give a little decision shot. First time, he's taking his time. Yeah. Uh, a few things to think about here is Magnus. Still going to be really interesting to. Whoa! We will keep an eye on this, of course, but I think we should go to the NBL game because that position that you mentioned is on the board. Amazing. And this is the key moment where Richard now needs to find H5. My move. There you go. No good. Terrible but move. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible move, but there you go. So the point is that after knight takes g5, h takes g4, bishop takes g4, what does he want to do here? That's a big question. Ah, rook h8 he wants. Does he? Well, I mean, surely. Maxime, Maxime hates queens. He will happily take here. Yeah. Yes. Take on... H3. Now all of a sudden, it's easier to play with white. We're hitting E6. We're hitting D5. Looks super tough for black to play, despite the small material advantage. Yeah. No, super tough. Yep, I agree with you. H5 looks a little bit loose. Lo looks wrong, but yeah, I didn't really understand. The computer gives black and edge with like cryptic moves like queen g7. I mean, <coughs> computer will be right as always, but that's not a move that's high on your to do list. So h5 looks very natural, but it gives white a chance to grab more things. I think queen g7 is actually designed to go knight fe7, knight g6, uh -huh. and put the knight f4. Why not knight fe7, knight g6 directly? I think because h6 is dropping. Oh. Yep, probably right. Yeah, probably. Yeah, so makes a lot of sense. But hard to think of. 
a drive is the, the human move, but as Jan just showed, the line with knight takes g5 and uh, sacking the queen actually looks very, very decent. Do we have to sacrifice? The okay, rook queen? hj is not forced here. No, I'm just curious. Queen g2 is also legal. The bishop f5 is tempting. I think he would do it. There we see. French top player. Been France number one for a very long time now, has Mr. MBL. Ah, that's not true, Ali Reza. <laughs> He's actually not. N Ali Reza, well, Ali Reza's. How long has Ali Reza been officially French now? Been a couple of years. So a couple of years? Three years. So. Prior to Ali Reza uh -huh. becoming French. How long was MVL number one for? Uh, no, I'm, I've been bad keeping track of the French top list, but <laughs> probably a solid decade in there. The well, I was going to say, like, more, maybe. did, did was, Bacro... I guess Bacro before him, but... Um, probably Maxime a decade. He's been around. No, yeah. I guess more, because Maxime was very high rated. It's like 18, uh -huh. 17, 18 already. Anyway, Maxime seems relaxed, took the pawn. And worry about nothing and goes to check out Ding's game, which we've slightly neglected. It's this very weird Benoni structure where Bishop they are doing e5. funky moves. Bishop e5, wow. who does that? That's not on my bingo card. Yeah, that's surprising. A3, rook b1, b4. Wow, bishop e5 is just... It's bishop. <sighs> Doesn't respect bishops. Can you trust a man that doesn't respect bishops? No. Okay. Are you not going to be captaining a team with Daniel Friedman in it? Unlikely, but who knows? Oh, have you? Is, is the team for the Olympiad been chosen already? No. Mm. You're the captain, right? You get a say in who is part of the team. I am the captain now. Du bist das Kapitän. Der Kapitän. Dear Captain. Okay, so as the captain, yes. What's the process for choosing a player? Yeah, it's four by rating. Then I pick one. So they they are restricting my powers. Wow, which is unfortunate. But you know these players, because I can't stand any of them. They rightly <laughs> insist that it's being done by rating, because they know they'd be out the door if they give me any more authority. If you could choose five players. Not because of rating. Who would you choose? Who would be on your list? Be, be the old guard. The old Alexander guard. Alexander Graf, uh, <laughs> Rostam Dautov, <laughs> Robert Hübner, who wants to join? Mm. Yeah. Arthur. Yeah, get Arthur over. Yeah. Daniel wouldn't make the team because he's too young. He's too young. Yeah. How old is Daniel? Forty-five-ish. Nah, a bit more. Forty-nine-ish. Forty-nine-ish. Okay. Wow, so you've got to choose one guy. Yeah. One ding to rule them all. No, I can't choose ding, unfortunately. Am I eligible? No. Ah. Shame. It's a great shame. Okay, don't like the move, Bishop e5, if we just go back to the move. Yeah. Just something about it bothers me, but... Daniel obviously has his reasons. Probably he does have his reasons. Should d7. Yeah, why not? Rook b8, rook takes b2. That's, takes bishop f6, wow. Are we missing that dark squared bishop? Yeah. But white is fine, it's not like it's worse. Play b4 or some move. Maybe Daniel would just want to simplify the position a little bit. So yeah, for sure, e5, I'm also. But it is what it is. Let's go back to Vinnie yes. against. What's Magnus's rapping name? Does he have a rapping name? 
He was on a rap song, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Them Stall Spanolin featuring Pimp Daddy. But I'm not sure he got a rap name. I think he was just called Magnus Carlsen. That's right. Um, great song. Great song, actually. So Vincent, he's done something wrong. He went C takes B4. As I mentioned, bishop F6. Eh. I really like bishops. These Germans are giving up the bishops like it's nothing. Friedman plays bishop E5. Keimer plays bishop takes F6. We'll, we'll have to have training camp on bishops. Like long range pieces, very powerful. I think you should punish some of your players if they give up their bishops sure. too early. But no, Vincent didn't play C4, but instead he took on B4. So he's three no. pawns up as things yeah, stand. Yeah, but his king. I'm not in love with this takes. So I know you five or I don't know. Looks like Pompey wants to take here first. And it's still going to take a while. Yeah, now he's on White is fighting for equality. And maybe, I'm not sure if that's a weakness, but it Magnus Carlsen blitzes out the Benoni against him, which he never plays. Do you repeat the line that he, you always play that? Like maybe that was a bit um, yeah, risky yeah. Maybe. by Vincent. Maybe he's just not well versed in another line versus the Benoni. Yeah. But what could you do? Plenty good lines here. Uh -huh. E4 H3, E4 F4, E4 Knight G2. No, I mean, <coughs> of course the line he played was fine, but it looks like he might be losing this theoretical debate, which is not surprising because Magnus looked at this probably this morning. Yeah. That morning, I mean, 5 p.m. after you woke up. <laughs> well, Vincent certainly hasn't studied today. Anyway. Knight takes d5. And gotta bring the king to safety. How bad is it if we just give all these pawns? Looks bad. Does it? Yes. Past a pawn in combination with the bishop? Yeah. I think I practically speaking, bad. very tough. A5. No, this is this is not what you want as white. No, it's not what you want, but what you might have to do. That's possible, but I think practically speaking, very, and very tough. Sven Nopp is entering the room. Sven, wow. everything under control? We saw you on stage there. A lot so. of people. So. Congratulations, look beautiful. Humble studio, but yeah, what an event you can see there with all the boards. 2,784 players in the open, plus six in the classics. So that's 2,790. That's it's the sort of rating I wish I was higher rated than Nakamura. Yeah. Uh, no, it's great to see chess still booming. Uh, still going strong, good old yes. chess? Good old classical chess, it's not just online, still people like to come to the tournaments, play, interact, it's a big social occasion. And here. these sickles, they play two games per day, right? I mean, two they show up here over day. Easter in their holidays to play two classical games a day. Yeah. That voluntarily. Is the, voluntarily, ah, yeah, yes. Sure. Sven is forcing some of them, but not all. <laughs> that is the love that they have for this game. And uh, it's, uh, it's a really nice atmosphere. Is it? Yeah, it's just playing two games a day is just... It's crushing. It's, cr it's soul, soul destroying. It's not two games of rapid like these guys, it's two games of classical. That's a, that's a, that's a 10 hour plus day. Two games of rapid is fine. Two it's games of rapid is fine. nothing actually. Yeah. Yeah, there are many rapid tournaments you play five games of rapid a day. Right. Well, but, uh, two games of classical, it's, it's really, really tough. Yeah. I haven't done it for a while. Also, I don't play chess, but Vincent, he maybe found a better way. He's trying to keep one pawn alive here in order not to give the A pawn. Then we see Hans Niemann spreading his wings. Yeah, but... And if nothing direct happens, maybe it's okay. 
I'd be scared though. I see the computer line follows up with king e2, king f3, for example, which I don't know. Wouldn't be my train of thought, like a5, king e2, followed by king f3. Yeah. Not on your list of candidates? No. Nah. But you have to connect the rooks, so king e2, I think, is logical, but uh -huh. the king on f3 is okay. It's reasonably safe. Alrighty. Um, so what's Magnus thinking about? He took the pawn. Actually, he's not thinking about anything. It's Vincent studying the position. Knight d4, keeping this pawn alive looks logical enough. d6 looks very random, but maybe it can buy you some time. And G3. Vincent goes for none of the above. He returns the pawn. But under a sort of bad circumstance. Oh my goodness, this is... Awful. Queen so takes queen b5. b5. I guess he wants queen c4, but then it's a bad takes, version takes of this endgame we had earlier. Yeah. No, no, no. The a pawn is running. Yeah, this doesn't look so great. Looks. Well, it's too early to say. It's not like white is lost or anything, but it looks like the Magnus Carlsen curse. It's not a curse, Magnus. Just pretty good at chess, but might continue. <coughs> Yeah, this is not good mm -hmm. at all for white because blacks, he takes on b5, of course. What else is he going to do? Yeah. I guess he wants to block with queen c4, but after king g... No, he yeah, goes king, king g2, g2. queen takes d5 will be played. Yeah, it's all similar stories. In black position, it's so easy to play. Push this pawn, ideally, till here. White has a tough choices. Do you put the queen here, try to block it? Do you exchange queens? What do you do? Now this, yeah. I'm a bit worried here. This could not end well. I am very, very concerned also for Vincent. Magnus has a determined look on his face, like 3 11. Yeah, he's, he's very uh, zoomed, zoomed in, zoned in. Zoomed and zoned. Yeah. Let's have a look at the NBL game quickly because we did have some. Is that an NBA game? NBL game. Ah, sorry, sorry. I was watching Denver Phoenix last week. Me too. Sick. Wait, that was really late. I know. Yeah. Woke up early. Woke up early, watched some Denver Phoenix, went to the gym. Did the Suns end up winning? Suns yeah. ended up winning. Jokic overrated? Nah, it's pretty good. Pretty good. So here, sorry, here's the MVL game. MVL, also a big NBA fan. Is he? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, who's his team? Uh, the, all these chess guys, they like Boston for some reason. <clears throat> Levon, also a big Boston guy. Magnus, big Boston guy. They're all Boston. Controversial guys. opinion? Boston? Uh huh. Who's their best player? Um, I like Peyton Pritchard. Okay, right. Jalen Brown? No. For me, I think he's the best player. <laughs> You're wrong. Am I wrong? Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah okay. <coughs> back to the <laughs> back to the chest. <laughs> I'm gonna we're gonna get heat in the chat today. What's going on here? Well, he didn't sacrifice the queen. Um, so what did he do? He, so knight g5, bishop g4, ah, queen e7, so Rapport did not attack the queen with rook h8, so he protected the e6 Seven. pawn. No, f stabilized with f4, yes. as you do. Rook h8, queen no, g2, and keep the queen. Oh, yeah, it's just like this. Oh, bishop c1, that's a nice mm. move. That's right up MVLs. Allez. 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 Champs Elysees. Agreed. Agreed. Do you know this German song? Which one? About Allee. No. It's a good song. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, 
What did, what did he do? Oh, he played rook. He moved the rook. What a putzer. Why not make the computer move? Leave the rook because where it his is. Because his rook, he just, your bishop. Right, he just thought that he didn't want to lose a rook. But. Okay, but come on, Maxime. Live a little. This would have been cool. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, and the, yeah, that would have been nice with the a7 pawn hanging, but not played. And what we have is rook bb1, bishop to g6. G six. Yes. Okay. He wants to go knight f7 next. Yeah, do this. Bishop is stupid on d2 anyway. Uh -huh. And if, ah, so knight f7. Then I take your yeah. rook. So I need to move the rook, rook d g8, or rook f g8, I should say. Looks like the most natural move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a mess. Practically, Richie might just be all right. No. I think one of the key ideas here is that at some point, black can play, let's say, knight f7, knight hg5, and then knight h4 and bishop to e4. Is he lining things up there? That is one of the key ideas. Knight seven, knight g five, knight h four, bishop four. Uh, yeah. Complicated. Not so obvious what white should be doing. Yeah. yeah. Rapport, he likes these French positions. The computer always says black is worse, or that. He's not going to get hit in the opening, especially in these closed structures. And then he can use his talent, shuffle pieces around. He's quite good at. Yeah. Vincent. Queen c4. Arm of Vincent. He decided to go Queen c4, but yeah. Mm. Now Magnus can once again take and then push his a pawn. Yeah, it's going to be fight for a draw here. Maybe Magnus goes a5 directly, also good. Giving Vincent the option, but I don't think it's what Vincent wants to play Queen a4. I mean, he's playing, rook one one. He's, yeah. he's playing rook a1 here all day. Twice and on twice Sundays? On Sundays. Oh. Yeah. Speaking of twice on Sundays, tomorrow, no games, because it's... Easter Friday. Karfreitag, Easter Friday. And I think there's even some regulations in this part of Germany. Correct. That you can't, at least you can't broadcast sporting events. You can't. On Easter Friday. It is... Forbidden. Why is that? You, you are well versed not only in the Bible but also German law. Yes, had a few run-ins. Um, <laughs> so why is that? Uh, it's a religious part of the country down here. This is, is uh, I think so. No, it's much. I don't know, more. but I mean, what's the much historical more meaning? Because you can do stuff on on Sundays or on other holidays. Well, it's, it's e Easter Friday. We can't do stuff. It's a, it's a very holy day, right? Easter Friday and especially especially Easter Friday. And I don't know I don't know what the rules of um, I'm trying to think actually where are December, we? December let's twenty fifth we we can do stuff, no? No, this is Easter Friday. Yeah, this is a much more holy this religious is the big one? day. Yeah, this is the big one. Apologies, I forget the not very I forget dedicated. the um, where are we? Karlsruhe is It's called Baden Württemberg. Baden Württemberg. That's it. The dirty south. Dirty south. It's the dirty German. south. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. No, the things German are gonna, Atlanta. Things are going to be closed tomorrow, and we 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 might not even have food. Oof, I was going to go shopping tomorrow. Were you? I'm not going to be able to do it. Food shopping. Also, but I need like t-shirts. T-shirts. Yeah, some white t-shirts. Right. Okay. Because I don't like washing, so I just buy new clothes whenever I'm on the road. <laughs> Okay. And some boxer shorts, some t-shirts. Okay. So it's going to be tough tomorrow. Wow. Your wife can't help you out with that one? No? Okay. There's Diane Friedman. Imposing figure at the board. Yeah. Is Ding scared? I don't think Ding so. Ding always looks scared. He doesn't look scared to me, I think. Mm. Mm. Looks focused, but I don't think he's very timid in chess terms. Mm -hmm. What's the position? Opposite colored bishops. 
They sacrifice the pawn, but his bishop will be quite active on this long diagonal. So I think he's actually fine. Bishop can come here. Hopefully yeah, it here. looks looks totally fine for black, doesn't it? This position. Looks like it might sort of peter out quite probably eventually has to return this pawn. Oh yeah, this is a compi line, for example. Takes, takes, takes. And hard to see white winning this. Just here, here. Mass exchanges should follow. Also no troubles for white. So probably draw. It's a very likely outcome. Vincent. He's trying. Yeah, trying then to tango here. But knight knight b6 gonna, looks gonna reasonable, but after rook. Mm. This is the problem. Wow, and rook takes a4, knight takes b6. That's cute geometry, actually. Now the knight on a8 is unhappy. But most importantly, rook takes a4 is met by knight takes b6. Well, that's most important. Maybe you have to go for this, but no, it's just lost. Yeah, you can't hold this. <coughs> no, this doesn't look good for Vincent. Magnus Carlsen, once again, with a heavy hand, trying to keep these youngsters down. King 94, 95. Yeah, not sure if it's lost, but it's not fun. Definitely not fun. No fun whatsoever. So Magnus in the driving seat, unclear MBL Rapport, Friedman maybe ever so slightly better against Ding, but can never see Ding losing this position. Looks like that will be a draw if I had to make a guess. Wow. More hot takes? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I literally said. Really. Uh, this yeah. one, anything could happen. Three yeah. results in play. Maybe four results. What's the fourth result? Zero zero. zero, zero. Get them both out of here. That happened in uh, that game where they had the night dance, didn't it? Yeah, the Polish double. Yeah. So zero zero is a possible result if you bring the game into disrepute. Yeah, they played the French. Who else you need? <laughs> No, I don't even know which side to choose practically. I'm slightly leaning towards black, although I love extra pawns, bishops. But king safety is so important in rapid games and in rapport games. There. I don't know. Like, seems so good, though, in these like, dynamic situations. I don't know. I'll just keep changing my mind. For now, I like black's chances. I always find that changing your mind according to the evaluation of the computer is a pretty good way to. Oh, that's a good tip. To be fickle. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, yeah, Magnus full control though. This is a nightmare, literally, uh, for White. You might have to go passive. He goes knight b6. No. <coughs> Come on, let's, Vincent. Let's get the camera. Let's see if we can get camera action. We need, we need the camera right now. We need right the now. camera there right now. Let's get knight b6 on the board. And Magnus is... He hasn't? Yeah, no, there's, there's a small... You blunder, what are you doing, face? Um, let's see how long it takes for him yeah, to do yeah, it. he does that one. He's trying to figure out what he missed. Yeah, knight d5. Just he hasn't missed anything. Very bad news. And I'm looking forward to seeing the reaction of Vincent. And also, it's easy to miss because you calculate right. rook a6 and you're right. trying to figure out if you can um, extract your knight here without material losses. But after knight d5, which here happened, you oh just boy. busted. And Vincent, the realization, yeah. he's trying to keep the poker face, but oops, that's the... That's bad news. Oh dear. It's rook a4, knight b6. Yeah, it's very easy. Yeah. To just not think about 95. But in general, it's not the Vincent we know, but that's no. what Magnus does. He makes it look easy against the best players in the world to make them look mortal. Oops. 
That is what we call a bit of a failure. <sighs> yeah. Tough. Tough for the German fans, but... Tough. What can you do? He's 19. Magnus is still pretty good. But Enzo will get stronger. Faster. Meaner. <laughs> Magnus? Darf Punk? Not familiar. <laughs> bigger, faster, stronger? Yeah. I don't think he's going to get bigger. He's taller than me. Who? Vincent? Kaima. Oh, yeah, yeah. He might get bigger. He might get bigger, but he's certainly not feeling that big at the moment. Um, no, he's just lost. Okay, 4, knight b6. And knight a8, bishop a1. Everything. It's actually... It's almost actually... Almost resigns. Like, no, it is probably resigns. go rook a4, knight b6. And play that endgame for a few moves, but it's fairly hopeless. Maybe you don't even play it because you're just... Just so annoyed. Magnus, great choice with hindsight, but that's also underestimated strength of his, not just his being able to play every opening, but also how well he picks what opening to do in what situation against what opponent to surprise and play on their weaknesses. Now he's, he's pretty smart about this chess stuff. MVL coming over saying, qu'est-ce que c'est, Vincent? Yes, yeah. Sarana, European Sarana. champion. Sarana is like, oh boy. Yeah, knight d5 is a very... Yeah, that's it. Uh, he took on a8? No, he didn't take on a8. Didn't make a move yet. Taking on a8 really is resigned. Not taking on a8, you just don't do, because after bishop a1. Knight is trapped in the corner, and this guy runs. Yeah, and even after e4, you can just go a3, I guess. Okay. Can we try it? No, or is that a blunder? Mm -hmm. No, it's good enough. Good enough. a2. The knight just... Oof! <laughs> you should maybe cut it off first. You've got to go bishop c3 first, right? Yeah. That was... Right. Yeah, and that, that does run. That, now, this is all hopeless and also... He takes you on a4, knight b6. Yeah, you play that end game a bit, you exchange rooks and... Oh no, hang in there a little bit. No, but it's mainly rooks. going through the motions. He blundered, he knows he's lost. So he'll keep it going for a while, but he's not gonna... gonna hold it. Just trying to make it to move 40. Which is fair enough. Okay. Arma Vincent. And MBL's position is somehow the king is now on e1. So what happened there? Let's see. Okay, rook b1, bishop g6, rook, rook f1. f1. King b8. Bishop c1. And king f2. It's running away. But was it good? Because it's losing the c2 pawn. Goodness. It's not just the pawn, but it's also this square. Right. Which, ooh. This is looking uh, a bit yucky now for MBL. Yep. Rapport, the tournament leader, keeps feeling himself. If he wins that one, that puts him on what? Four out of five? And Maxime on one and a half out of five? That's already a sizable difference. Yeah, I don't see MVL, of course, getting back into contention. I don't think he can, actually. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Rook g1 played. Mm -hmm. Looks all a bit loose along there. But uh, maybe... Maybe there's no... King a8. Whoa. Taking his time. Pas de échec. Just looks horrible to me for white. Just... King is not great. Bunch of pressure. No attacking prospects. No, it's clearly gone wrong for MBL here. But um, he's he's a resourceful guy, and mm. he may just find a way. Mm. Not that much to talk about in the Friedman Ding no. game. Although Ding got the maximum he could get, he's slightly better here of anything with him blocking this diagonal 
and controlling the equivalent of the dark squares, but it's still. Draw is a big favorite. Bring the queen to d2, go bishop f3, king g2, h4 if you wanna. Don't really see Daniel losing this very often, but black is a bit better. You can put the bishop on d4, go g6, king g7, e5, f5, e4. These two pawns aren't such a big factor. Did he go queen b7? Or queen b5 he played? Queen b5, he's, he wouldn't mind the queen exchange, but it's not gonna happen. Dick's gonna play g6. Dick's gonna try a bit here, as he should. Magnus has gone for rook a2 and he's opted to, uh, to trade off the rooks. Yeah, Vincent declined to do so earlier, so Magnus forces it. Yeah, I guess they're both fairly confident that this is hopeless. There was something here that was difficult to win, but it's not this peace constellation, no? I remember some analysis in one, one of the Dvoretsky books with this 4 versus 3 in the peace stone. Wasn't this? Not sure. Looks fairly lost. Good confirmation, by the way, that Sven Nopas does play chess. There's a picture of him playing chess. Somebody put it in my Twitter. Thank you for that. Wow. So we now know that Sven is not just all talk, he is all walk as well. It's all walk? Talk the talk, walk the walk. You think he does a walk and talk? I think he does walk and talks. Walk and talks? You do walk and talks, that's your favorite thing. No, I don't like walk and talk. Yes, you do. No. Every time we speak on the phone, you're walking and talking. Yeah, but I don't like it in person. Oh, I see. I don't like a stop and chat, I don't like a walk the and talk. The stop and chat. Rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Stop and chat. The cut and chat. No, was it the cut and no. can't remember. Anyway, uh, rest in peace, Richard Lewis. We've got the tournament hall. That looks f like Fedosev. Go if H4. I, if I, I don't like to. H5. Should go E5, F5. Well, the pawns will be too fixed. Okay, it doesn't matter. It's equal. No matter what. Why do you go h5? Push these guys. Ali. Back. So how does black win? Attack the f2 pawn? Bring um, the king? Yeah, I think you can bring the king. Mm. Um... I think with three pawns, obviously any minor piece trade is just good, so. Oh. It does bring the king. Do you think Magnus would be unhappy if he would not win this game? I think he'd be beyond devastated. Mm -hmm. I mean, peace up. Do you think he knows how to checkmate with knight and bishop versus king? Uh, yes. Yeah, I think so too. Not as fast as me, but yes. No. You think he knows the W maneuver? Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, uh, I don't see any universe where he doesn't win this position. That said, mm -hmm. I can't tell you with any level of confidence what Black's best uh, route to victory is here. As in, I have no idea. Is it, I'm also not sure. Is it, it, tell me it's not a draw. <coughs> let's, just, let's just understand that. This isn't I'm a draw. I'm trying to right? recall if it was this position where there was analysis in the, I think one of the Dvoretsky books, it was winning, but it was not straightforward. However, this, I guess you sort of win. Win by, by hand eventually, just by attacking. 
the F2 Poland then there will be all kinds of unpleasantness. Also, usually you can go H5 of 6, G5, for Poland G4, and then try to transpose to a winning pawn end game, even sacrificing a piece on F2 at the right moment. So I think it should be a fairly straightforward win, but I, uh, I vaguely, vaguely recall having seen some analysis of this. I think you hit the nail on the head there. I yeah. think it's this position is, is all about making a key sacrifice and transposing to a winning king and pawn. Huh. That's the that's it. That's the key. Meanwhile, Daniel Friedman has just accepted being a pawn down here. Yeah, it doesn't change much. I kind of like it, so you don't get distracted by these pawns. You still have to be a little careful defending against the e5, f5 thingy, but no, I think he knows what he's doing. Also, no. Yeah, he's got to be fine. Hmm. Take it, live a little. Oh, that's beautiful. Actually, that's very spotable as well. That's, that really does just end proceedings. Queen G5 check with Take a... Take it like Polaroid pitch. Queen D8. Draw. That is a draw. Ah, a, a, a nice uh, opportunity here for Daniel. Yeah. And Some Bishop D4, Queen G5. Queen G5. But maybe he doesn't want this because suddenly Queen B2. You have to think about it, but it should be fine. Bishop E2? Oh, wow, no, he's not going to play. G2 is not so easy. No, this no, you don't play. Queen takes F2 check. No, no, no. King H3 and you get lucky after Queen F1? You don't, but it's because of Bishop F6, which is very specific. So we take the pawns. But um, Queen F1 here? Sorry, you have to go King G4. Yeah, what's so bad with that? Wow. No, but apparently you have to go bishop e2, which is tough, tough, tough. Yeah, that's tough to see ahead. Also, he doesn't need to do it because the position they have is drawn as it is. He just sits tight. Or of course, it's nice. Still. Ding is probably hoping for bishop h5, bishop d4. Yes, uh, we'll see. Let's go back to the Rapport game because I want to see. I want to see if it takes H five. We'll keep an we'll keep an eye out for it. We'll keep an eye out for it. We've got to keep Come the on. folks entertained. People love watching Ding. It's good to see Ding back in action. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, it is. There he is, the world champion. The thing is, even... He's practicing his stare, is he? Is he staring Daniel down? I, I think, think so. Uh, he's just checking. Surroundings, thinking, who are all these people? Now he's watching the other games on the screen. Now he's trying to keep his poker face, saying, please take on H5. Daniel. Daniel's very steady. He's not. Not going to be too tempted. Let's go to that Emville game. All right. Because this is real action heating up here. Wow. <laughs> the king has made its way over to d2. The bishop is firmly cemented on. Cemento. The first move I would play, look at is knight a5. Uh -huh. Because when I get to positions like this, Jan, I ask wh which of my pieces are not working. Ah, oh, okay. I saw you normally just pick the first or second computer move and then name that. But um, the which of the no. pieces not working is also yeah, a good it, idea. That's yeah. a, it's a better method. Oh. Um, so knight a5 would be my top choice. Uh -huh. the knight, then, yeah, well, the knight on f5 and then is Then after bishop b4, your top choice would be b6? 
Or you would go back, or like what? Well, what bishop, would be the idea? Bishop before I'm um, properly understood. Actually, that's a problem. Uh -huh. uh, so knight if I bishop before b6 looks weird to play like that, but the open b file might actually benefit black uh -huh. because rook b8 suddenly is in the air. So, but no, rook g6, bishop, mm. king c1. Yeah, maybe you didn't know about this. Oh, but now Which knight, pieces you can improve? But now knight a5 is really serious because knight b3 check exists and d3 is not hanging. Uh -huh. Now, I don't know if you want to go knight b3 check, but it's certainly worth considering. Uh -huh. Probably no good, but... The I king would has probably made go, go back. I normally ask myself in such positions, which of my pieces is misplaced? I don't like the, don't like the rook here. So just Why would you not put it on h6? Just h3. Just h3, yeah. yeah. Doesn't do very much. I wonder if there's... I doubt there's ever an exchange stack there. Yeah, the back rank is too weak. Never. No, I don't, I don't know. I. Who are you it's rooting for, Richard or Maxime? I think Maxime Richard, is your boy, right? Think, you're, you're rooting for Maxime. Well, Maxime is my boy, but... I, I kind of want Richard to win. Why? Because I think he's just playing better chess in general. Ah, so you're like Peter Leko. You, you're not rooting for your friends. You're rooting for whoever plays better on that day. I w exactly. Like also, also I, in football, you're just this supporting is all the teams. You pure just meritocracy. Ah, whoever beautiful. merits it wins. Ah. Greetings, Peter, if you're watching. I hope you can at least watch some handball football to pass the time till your voice is back. Or chess. But Peter, he's always sweating Vincent's games. And it's been tough for Vincent supporters. Yesterday, Vincent had two winning positions. Had to um, live with a draw in the end in both of those. Now he's going down against mm. Monsieur Magnus. And he'll end up on minus one when uh, after yesterday he could easily have had plus two. Ah, mm. knight f3, knight e4 here is massive. Because if king e2, then I think he's going to play bishop takes g3. Nah. No? Never. Really? Never. Ever. Oh, sorry, he's got three pawns, not four pawns. I beg your pardon. Sorry. Right. I thought he had four pawns. Mm -hmm. That would make conversion easier. Uh. If black had a pawn on e6 here, would bishop takes g3 be the move? I don't know. I'd be quite comfortable playing bishop f6 as well <laughs> with a pawn on e6. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no need to over over complicate things. You're thinking about it. You'd be so happy if you took here. Probably winning. <laughs> yeah, just because the pawns are so bad, you might be able to just still win this. Um, King f2, knight f5. Just, <laughs> just still wins, no? Yeah. King e4. Who knows? I'd do it. He might do it. He likes clarity. If he can simplify the position, he sure is winning. Clarity is important. In chess and in no, not all the guys like clarity. Like no? Fabi, he's always trying to make it weirder and weirder. He just wants to see the the board burn. But Magnus, he likes you know to clarify the situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, they would both win this with black. It's, it's not about that. But in general, I think Magnus likes a little clarification. Friedman didn't take on h five. And yeah, he's just sitting. Which is good enough, but you need some patience. And he will know this. He's very well educated, very strong handcam player. He will know. He can just wait it out. What's going on here, by the way? G5, yeah, no, you have to take. I was looking at this, and then I was looking at something utterly ridiculous, but. No, I think you just keep waiting. 
you can't go king g4. H4. No, you don't want to swap all these pawns off. This is. Well, you have to. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Okay. No, no. No, I don't like it. <laughs> what else is there? <laughs> well, I don't know what else there is, but nothing. So you have to try h4. But I don't. Get, I don't even get it really. No, oh, it's a draw. Just a draw. Ah, oh, maybe there's one idea, which is to go h4, g8, oh. king h, uh, and then if white passes with bishop b7, you play bishop d6. Yeah, or queen g7. Or check. queen g7. Take the bishop. Uh -huh. Sorry, against bishop b7, there's queen g7 check. So here already you need. Selective Ale. <laughs> it's actually easily blunderable. Ding play queen d3. What's that about? Can I go f4? I can go you f4. Can, you can go f4. Ah, this is check. It doesn't matter. I don't care. If you go king h6, I'll take. Yeah, then it's really a draw. And here, bishop takes. I, also, I am not losing this ever. And I'm a terrible endgame player, so this is a strong statement. Yeah, no, I like f4. Thank you. But you can also take and then go f4. It's <laughs> not strictly necessary. You went f4 straight away. Yeah. But here, maybe this order is better because you're setting a trap. Like mm. The king comes here. It's checkmate. Crowley Ding will see. But the way he played, he's not setting that trap. Now there's no losing move for black. Takes on f3. He takes, wow. Yeah, that's really just... Ah, okay, he's just going home. Yeah, he's <laughs> just... Uh, yeah, now it's just... And handshake, is that allowed? Ah, it's pass move 40. They're not allowed to make yeah. draws in the first... Or draw offers in the first 40 moves. But here they are. Yeah, Ding had enough. Yeah. Solid game by Daniel Friedman. And Ding, glad to see him in action. It's not old thing yet. Like, no. Let's give him time. I mean, he obviously can play with all these guys. But if you recall the player that won the Sinkerfield Cup, beat Magnus Carlsen in the tie breaks there, he's not back to that level just yet. But we should be patient. Should be happy to see him play at all. <coughs> and all these people mocking him because he's not as good as Magnus, maybe. It's not that easy to become chess world champion and be a stable 2800 plus player. Like, <coughs> so give Ding some respect. It's just amazing when you think how Magnus has maintained his rating for all these years. The, the average performance he's had to put in is it's just phenomenal. It's just truly. No, we know Magnus could, but I'm saying these other guys, they also have to put in an hour or two. Looking at some chess, you know? <clears throat> Absolutely. Rishi with a with a with a moment with a, a an opportunity. Do here. it. B five. Very logical. I like it. You get the the knight on a five and. Uh, and yeah, he's played it. Yeah. Allez. Allez, le bleu. Richie is uh, Richie is strong. He's, he's looking very good. strong. Yeah, he's looking, looking relaxed. Good. Looks happy to play chess. Sometimes Richie, I don't know. Should we call him Richie? I think it's okay. I don't call him Richie to his face. Peter, call Peter calls him Richie. To I his think. face? Not to his face, but anyway. Richard having a fantastic tournament so far. Much better here. If he wins this, he will cement his top spot. But in the end, you know it's going to be. Magnus, he's going to finish second in the qualifying stage. He's going to win again. He always wins. That's his, his trick. <laughs> B5 is very strong, though. Yeah, in the, uh, this, is a, this is a really powerful move. Because after a takes b5, he wants to go rook b8. This is his brilliant ah, idea. I didn't even see that. Yeah, oh, this is 
Queen b5, queen b2 is actually not yeah. great, but this Rook is b8 tricky. is brilliant. And after b takes c6, queen takes a3 check is the important little, little trick and rook b1 mate. Ooh. Very, very tough. Possible. What do you do? I think you take anyway. And then I hope for the best here. But yeah, this is his point. He's yeah, this is hopeless. Feeling himself. Magnus didn't take on g3. Magnus respects bishops. But he still has to win it. Yeah. yeah. We have one draw in Friedman Ding. Indeed. Mm, Maxime Ochela Grave. The man from Paris. He's not actually from Lyon, he supports Lyon. He's not from there. Trying to come up with a move here. A big fight yesterday against Magnus Carlsen. Was a piece down. Looked like he was going down. But then managed to swindle Magnus and almost won the game in neutral time travel. But here he's got his work cut out for him. Against a very strong looking Richard Rapport. What's happening on your Twitter? Any new followers? Um. No, I'm getting a, a, a bit of uh, nice comments from people. Beautiful. So that's good. Um, a takes B, rook B8. It's a nice trick. Yeah. Bishop A4 on the board. Bishop A4? Yeah, this move? No, no, he went Bishop yeah, B2 first. Rather, yes, exactly. Queen b5, Bishop a4. Bishop a4, he'll go queen b7 or queen b6. I'm not sure which is better. Uh, queen b6 looks more. And this is just horrible for, for Maxim. The knight comes to, to b3. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then there's going to be some, some shot that basically finish it, finishes the game off somewhere, it feels. Yeah. Some knight e3 or... Uh, something like this and then the knight comes to c2 and no no this is this is bad knight e3 knight c2 is just uh, immediately over looks pretty bad gotta move the queen away first but yeah i don't think mm -hmm. maxime is gonna publish this game in his in his magazine he's got a magazine yeah maxime Oh boy. Queen went back. I think this is not as good actually, because I think the knight needed some support on a5, but I think it's probably okay. King d1, Maxim running away again. Mm -hmm. He's gone. King's staying quite busy. Really busy. The king has gone from the king's side to the queen's side, now he's running back to the king's side. Yeah, I didn't like queen b7 actually. No? No. What second computer move first was queen b6. Yeah, it felt a little bit better to have the queen uh -huh. on b6. <coughs> okay, Richie will probably go knight a5 anyway here. Yeah, I will guess that's his plan. Yeah. Here he comes. Mm -hmm. Ale. Indeed. You think the king is running back? Because let's not forget he did castle kingside early in the game. I think he has to now. Sarlis has to cover b2 because after queen takes b2 there was bishop takes c6 check. But now after knight a5 he has to do something about it. So probably the bishop goes away. Beautiful. It's fine if you're doing stuff for me, but we can no, switch I'm the just, sound off. Yeah, no, I'm <laughs> just literally, I'm getting pinged about the commentary. Getting pinged? P 
pinged yeah. and getting must pinged. be very stressful. It is. Mm. There you go. Okay. So. Bishop a3 played. Bishop a3 played. All right. No checkmate yet. Why not knight b3? Oh. Takes. King e1 no, and now bishop c one. Then it is checkmate. Yeah, but king e1 and now the bishop comes to c5 yeah. and suddenly I have all this counter. All play. of a sudden it's white. Oh my attack. goodness. Can you imagine? That's actually not completely out of the question. Not at all. This ain't over yet. So let's try to figure out why queen b6, which was so much better. If I do the same. Now, after knight b3, takes... Ah, yeah, obviously. Now there's knight ah. takes d4. That's the difference. An obvious shot. Obvious shot. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Queen takes d4 is so beautiful because you hit both rooks. Yeah, I kept it. No human spots that from far away. So we can't blame Richie too much. Now he looks a little, not rattled, but unhappy that it's, it's not collapsing yet. Yeah, he's kind of, he's, he's intensely looking at the board thinking, why haven't I found a breakthrough yet? And he understands he has to be careful. MBL is very resourceful. Knight b3, as we've already seen, is actually a mistake. And if knight b3 is not the move here, then the question then becomes, well, what is the move? Because white has got a really easy plan of king e1, king f2, mm -hmm. or playing a move like, I don't know, bishop b4, or you know, bishop b4 followed by bishop c5. I would probably have my king on e1 in all of these instances. That's Hans. Let's see what Hans thinks about it. Nah, he's not. Yeah, just he, walks by. Yeah. yeah. So... It's actually... I need the glasses. Five minutes for Old Richie age. and he goes queen... Queen h7. Wow, what kind of move Ooh. is that? Very funky. That is funky and it's bad. Too, bad. I mean, <laughs> it's cool. It's a cool move. The point being, of course, knight takes h7, rook takes g1, check. What is this, by the way? Is this over? And Queen even this. one? This doesn't look obvious to me either. Knight e3, king d2. Knight e3, king d2, knight f1. Come on. And if king c1? Rook g2, of course. Nah, okay. <laughs> this is random, but okay, you don't have to go. Knight f1, that was a bit much. You could take. Even Funky move, queen h7. And but they're also both low on time. But bishop b4 is just insta-played by Maxim, no? Just Did play it. Now, unbelievably, Maxim Richard turned is in, the tables. Yeah, Richard is in big trouble. Unless now. the king will go back to c1. Unbelievable. And Richard with whoops, I Richard's like. like idea, but, but if did you notice Richard's reaction there? He just He's unhappy. He's unhappy. And Maxim? He's He's resilient. Just uh, yes. so tough Rapport to be. Rapport is giving you the ugh, I blundered face. Yeah. Because the queen is now totally offside, and if the knight goes to b7 here, for example, you go bishop c6, and it's just so over. Pretty much checkmate. It's yeah. just mm -hmm. over. Rook takes a7, followed by queen a2 is... Oh, no, king b6, sorry. Uh, yeah, bishop just five bishop c5 is good, queen a2 is good. Yeah, it's just really over. And with four minutes left, Richard. One, one move, that's all it takes. Yeah, one bad move. And it's all over. Uh -huh. It's like with the Joker. The Joker? All it takes is one bad day. Which Joker? Um, from Batman. Ah, Batman Joker. What did he do here? 
He does go queen h5. This is very what? surprising because, like, king c1. What else is he going to do? Well, I know, but just. Okay, and. You have to go rook takes b4. This is going to be a very difficult. Nah, he's going to do it. Yeah, and then Keep he's going mixing to take, it. take on d4. No, I would still lose this with either side instantly. <laughs> so many knight forks. Like so bishop b a five ninety three. Like b a five ninety two. King b two c three is is unfortunate. Yeah, R R Rickard is a hundred percent going to uh, going to do this. Yep, here it goes. And knight takes d four. Yeah. And now king b2 is the professional. Yeah, king b2 makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Stepping out of all the knight checks. So you can start with that. But knight b3. The game continues. The problem for black take. is... Just take. Once the smoke clears, the queen on h5. The queen f2. Misplaced. Ah, there's queen e2 check. But even that... Is this d4? Yeah, takes queen e2. Wow. Rook takes a7 draw. Big mess. And like seem thinking. Also after king b2 you have to think about knight e2, threatening c3. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's all. Cool. Um, very messy. And what's going on in the Magnus? F4, g4 by Magnus. Yeah, Magnus has been... Wow. Winning for a while. Vincent hanging in there. He dragged this game to move 60. Well, frankly, he, we thought he could have resigned to move 29, but he still lost. Magnus took his time. Slowly improving. Dominating. FD5, GH3, King F4, H3. G4. Yeah, no, it's really over now because the knight Sitting. catches the pawn. Yeah, FD5 played. He takes the knight, king takes, and knight g5. Another classy little move. And after king h4, he knight can just three. give this check. The king keeps coming, but he's not in Take. time. Knight takes e5. Yeah. And then king e4, knight g4. That's it. Knight takes e3. Hmm. Yeah, it's resigns time for, for uh, Vincent here. It's 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 really resigns time. Do you think Magnus needs a gimmick when he wants his opponents to resign? Like Kasparov would always put on his watch again. Yeah, it would be better if Magnus did have a gimmick. Yeah. Maybe uh, I've got a suggestion. Uh -huh. uh, he brings a comb to the board and he just starts combing his hair. You know, Great just idea. Great idea. ready, ready to go. <coughs> just ready, time for the. Or evening. he grows a mustache and starts twirling it. Let's go. Knight f3, he'll go king h5, and knight takes e5, king g5, and king e4, and... Yeah, he's got this figured out. King e4, and... Riza Ndowski. Time to give it up. This is the moment. The game will no longer continue. Think so? Yeah. Yep. Vincent resigns. Magnus looks happy. Yeah. Great opening choice. Mixing it up. Um, decent preparation. Clearly wasn't just bluffing. And uh, Vincent with a few inaccuracies and then a big blunder. And just like that, Magnus uh, wins another game of chess. Just like that. Alrighty, uh, knight A to B3 here. Vince is not even done for today. I mean, sorry, 9 p.m. Oof. That was a little break. Brutal. He used to play another game. Absolutely brutal. Oof. For us, I mean, not for them. No, no, <laughs> for us. <laughs> Bishop takes Should B3. Knight yeah, takes they're B3. going down this road. Knight B3. Queen F2. Queen F2. Do you see the new Roadhouse movie? 
No, I did see the old roadhouse, but the it hasn't. Well, Peter Lecco has that much we do know. Peter's probably seen roadhouse. Yeah, hundred percent. It's a classic. Yeah, we have uh, a tricky position where. You know, if knight takes a1, rook takes a1, queen e2, <coughs> the problem is that... After What's the, the problem? After the queen trade, if I can then go king c3 and... Uh, but I'm going d4, I'm not going queen e2. Well, ah, you want to go d4 here. Yeah. I mean, this white wins, I think. Yeah, white does win that. But d4 is a classy move. And... Now, if I was white... Take probably no queen e2. Okay, let me rephrase you should take probably. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I'm and what is this? Still, sort of a mess if you ask me. And I, I'm not sure Richard has played d4 directly, he doesn't respect. Oh, rooks. no, but this is no good. Do you respect rooks? this? Is no good. Queen g2, king, king b8. But why is this queen c6 and now rook so good? I don't understand anything. You want to go queen c6? Yeah, the computer does. Uh, but yeah, it's very, once again, almost impossible. Knight a1, knight e6. Impossible is strong, but... No, it is impossible. Yeah. Actually, actually, knight e6 here is really impossible. It's, it's cute, though. Once no, because you see queen e2 and you think you're getting mated. No, but queen e2 and you just immediately switch off. Why? King a1? There's Rook takes g1. Mate. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> And you so have to King A3, three, and you're just King A4. Oh, no, wow, it's yeah, just that's pretty sick. Hmm. No, no, no. Okay, There's just no way happening. that's happening. No. What has Maxim done? Yeah, he's played Rook A3. Yeah. Queen E2? But that's really bad, no? no? Queen E2. That's no, no, that's really bad. Because but now you can just take, take. Can I take on b3? At one That's what I wanted to do. Uh, but this looks uh, good, doesn't it? Yes. g3, king c3. Yeah, this looks very good for white. Quite a turnaround. Richard was dominating this game for most of it, or it felt like. But Maxime is slippery. He's like a slippery fish. What's a slippery Creature. A, st uh, a slippery creature mm -hmm. with a lot of eel? slime. Eel. Yeah. Are they slippery? They should be Have slippery. you eaten eel before? No. No? Okay. I have not. Not my favorite. Are you a big eel guy? No, I am a big um, fish wise. I like a pulpo, I like an octopus. Pulpo a like jäger? Yeah, I love the pulpo a like jäger. Like the little, what's it, the seasoning, the, the gewürz, what's it called? The Pepper. Yeah, but no, it's a special, isn't it? They've got a special, big fan. Mm -hmm. So is Maxime, actually. I don't know that that's true, actually. I just totally no, made it up. True. Yeah, I just <laughs> totally made it up. <coughs> uh, so yeah, big trouble now for Rapport, that's for sure. Yeah, surprisingly. Maxime with a comeback. Knight F3! Is that a good move? Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. That is classy. Clarifying. Yeah. Rook G1, Knight G1. Takes, takes. The Knight looks somewhat stupid. But, but King C3. It can always but King C3. Re-enter the action. And Just take yeah. the bishop and you're ready to... Doesn't work for black. Yeah, this is... Maxime, he's gonna... He's gonna win. Gonna win, and then all of a sudden it's anybody's tournament. Then we have Rapport M and Magnus in the lead. Maxime's back to 50%. Ding's at 50%. Friedman, Keimer, minus one. That yeah. would mean the Germans sharing last place. That ain't right. That's... That is not right. Knight f3 is a classy move. He'll probably go rook h6. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, he'll probably go rook h6. 
Now, uh, Ma uh, Maxime will take on. Now you give a check. But why? Then you go the, back. But why give the check? Ah! You activate your rook. Wow! I didn't even see that. I think he wants to take the d4 pawn, though. No. Also possible. Then you don't have to worry about it anymore. But rook g7 is also nice. Can we do both? Give a check and take the d4 pawn. I don't know, then maybe we don't have king a4. I don't know, we need to. We need king a4. Mm. Can we lose? Yeah, yeah king a4, bishop d1. One, and we lose. <laughs> That's the sort of thing that... So if he wants to take, he should maybe start... Oh, sorry, after rook h6. Start by doing so. And king b2. Or king a4. King b6 again? Yeah. No, he's, he has come yeah, back. Yeah, he does go king b2. Yeah. He's, he's steady. Bishop c4 is the only move here. Uh -huh. And then... And then we need a conversion. Torre g6. Torre g6? C. Rook h4? Torre h4. Yeah. And we both wait, and then I'm you bring the king. Okay, I put the bishop on d5. Uh -huh. Maybe king c3 first. I don't know, but it looks fairly lost. No, it definitely looks like white is stabilizing. H2. Is he bluffing? Um, I would say not. Is he rushing or is he dragging? Because look. Oof. Rook G6. That's nasty. Ouch. So you can, so, sorry, so you give rook g7 check a go first here, right? Yeah, because you want yeah. to lure the king right. to the sixth rank. So there's a pin later. I think Maxim sees this even with a minute. And if you have to go king b8 or king c8, it's really over. Mm -hmm. Okay, he doesn't need to do this. He can play all kinds of normal moves like king c3. Yeah, that's what he's done. But now rook h3. Yeah, you gotta go back. King oh, he's three. triangulating. So subtle. But now bishop c4. He went rook There's h2. Some work to be done. He went rook h2 after king c2. Again. Second chance. And maybe he's spotted it by now. Maxime is a tricky trickster. Yes. Let's see where Richard puts his king. Well, he's got to go forward. King c8 is just resigns. No, oh, Hans is watching. Hans, is that with his lawyer? <laughs> I think it's a security. Probably both. Two for one package. Must be nice to have like a Oh, what? Lawyer who's also a bodyguard. He took? Oh, he went for... A, a ah, this is also easy because he's six. Game. King yeah, but D3 this is and this rook is f2 also are just king e3 and he gets yeah. the two passes. Yeah. Ah, yeah, also. Very clinical. King e3, rook b2, and rook g6. Yeah, let's give a check. Yeah, he just takes here. Then he will have two pass pawns. And they will get the job done. King d2, for example. Seems taking a moment to figure out where he wants his king. He wants it here to support the passes. Doesn't matter. Two pass pawns always beat one pass pawn, or if they're connected in a situation like this. Okay, rook b4, rook e6. Yeah. King will come to c5, I would guess. No, I guess he goes back to at least try to help with a5, but or to b5. King doesn't before. matter. Okay. No, you've got to calculate here. This is... Yeah. But he does go king c5. Much. Very surprising. That I don't like, because then the rook can we'll get to a6, a6 in yeah. one go. No, just yeah, king somewhere. 
But also now, yeah, he plays king f3. a5 rook a6. Yeah, or f5 first. No, he'll go rook a6. Yeah, this makes white's life a little easier than king yeah. b5. Either was saving the game, but this gives him another tempo. Now king b5, rook a8, and then we run. Or as we say in German, wir run. Wir run? Yeah, uh -huh. we run. Okay. Wir rennen. Same thing. Uh -huh. Lola rennt. Eric the e pawn. Is he Eric? I think he's Eric today. So what's that going to mean then? After the first round, it's going to mean that we have um, king d5. Yeah, f5, king e5, e7 is really nice, and f6. Oh, sorry, f5. f5 first, first yeah. it. The king cannot block. Yeah, because of rook e6 check. Yeah. You play rook e6 check point. here every day of the week? No, I play f6 every day of Would the week. Would you? And twice on Sundays? No, just once on Sundays. Yeah, this is... This is not even... Anyway, this is... Choose your poison. Goes f5. Fairly resignable. And MVL coming, coming back from a really tough position. Yeah, but it's of course pure skill. He never blunders, never makes it easy, keeps making a move, sends his king there, sends his king back. Was slightly outplayed by Rapport starting in the opening. It was, yeah. Really trying to hang in there for most of the game. But he has a lot of experience with crappy positions and he's so, so cunning. Mm. Yeah, that's why he's the world number three in Rapport. It's just very, very good. Hot take. <laughs> Former Blitz World Champion as well. Five seconds, I think, for Richard here. Who is five seconds? A3. A3 played. Just E7. Is yet the, this is not tough. Yeah. Four yeah. seen. And that's enough. And uh, Rapper resigns. Upset, of course. Ruined a very good position there. But that ends. The round, another long one, which means we have two victories. Magnus Carlsen winning with the black pieces, moving to a plus score. MVL with the white pieces moving back to an equal score. And a draw between Daniel Friedman and Ding Liren in the standings. We now have Rapport and Carlsen in the co-lead. Yeah, Rapport was so close to winning that game instead of losing it. Ding, very solid. Does he have five draws? I think he has five draws. Maxine coming back to 50% and the Germans in shared last place, but just two out of five, just minus one. And now they play each other. Friedman versus Keimer in round number six. Ding Liren is facing Maxine Vashila Graf. And we have the clash of the tournament leaders as well. Carlsen versus Rapport. Rapport won in the first round after Magnus hung his knight. Magnus will feel good now after he won a game. We'll be looking for revenge with the white pieces. I'll be looking for a little break now. Thank you so much for watching. Use the break to purchase my new chessable course. Aggressive 1 E4 repertoire. That's what people need in these tough times we're having. Who wants to play the Berlin? You need to learn the Dub of Italian. Check it out. Chessable.com. There you go needs women and minorities to be just as included and welcomed. I think that's the only way forward. We're going to play a huge role in making the community a more welcoming place. 
and making it a place where we really are just focusing on the chess and nothing else. I really do believe that women are the future of chess. Women play an important role in shaping chess's future by mentoring and supporting young female players to come out and play chess with confidence. I do feel that women will be very important in the future. I can see this is already happening. We have a lot of young girls coming up and uh, hopefully we will have many more jurists. And also we will have a lot more girl participation in the future. I hope that as more and more women start to play chess, it will become more balanced and it will change the culture of chess in general. I think in 20, 30 years, we're going to be seeing so many more women that are grandmasters, so many more women that are at the top, and so many more women at chess tournaments. And that is really my my dream. That's what I want to see. I think that the future of chess, the role women will play in it, will be pretty much the same role that men play in it. I'm hoping that we'll get a better ratio of men to women in chess and to just see it be even bigger sport and more people can enjoy it. Chess is an ancient game. It's been around for longer than 2000 years. And if we want to thrive and stick around for longer, um, we need women. We need to, as women, stay in this game so that girls and women in the future can see us, see that we were here and feel like they should be there too. Don't go and do that, please. Hey, you do whatever you like. We can't condone anything of the sort. No, we can't live! What's the best way to follow any chess event from the Champions Chess Tour to the Candidates, Speed Chess Championship, Title Tuesday, FIDE World Championship, and so much more? Chess.com slash events has all of the top chess tournaments played both over the board and online. Analyze and review games from the world's greatest players with live commentary, cloud analysis, opening explorer, and table bases. Find all the key event information, including schedules, prizes, results, news reports, player bios, tie breaks, and more. Even compete by voting for your predicted results. Explore chess.com slash events today on web or with our iOS and Android apps and experience chess like never before. Grandmaster Daniel Naritsky, we are watching Valentina Gunina taking on Ju and June, the women's world champion at the 2023 World Blitz Championship in Uzbekistan. And the player is starting off with a pretty conventional opening, uh, a Queen's Gamut decline, and now a semi to rush as Ju and June brings her C pawn up to the center and a big exchange in the center. This is a very, very popular opening. Black takes on D4 and then takes on D5 and now gets an isolated Queen pawn on D5. Okay, now the rook comes into D1, and now it's Gunana's turn to launch an offensive and chase the black pieces out of the center. Knight to E7. Ju and Jun has to oblige. And are there tactics? No. Back to home base goes the white queen. Bishop to D5, pinning the knight, forcing the weakening move. F3, Ju and Jun is playing an amazing game with only a couple of seconds on her clock. She's doing a terrific job of sort of keeping the status quo and continuing to induce weaknesses in white's position. But she is still down a queen, and white is still pressuring the king side. Bishop to A7, Gunina has plenty of time on her clock. Queen to D3 was another devilish move. It threatened two checkmates on H7, and actually... Actually, there was a mate on d8 that was threatened and so ju and june has to make some luft but g6 is a very weakening move in four seconds as that knight it couldn't decide where to go knight to c6 knight to e4 gunana brings her knight into the game two seconds for ju and june rook to d8 chasing the white queen away oh but that's a pin that rook on d1 is undefended oh gunana blunder that move gunana blundered rook to d8 and now the white queen has nowhere to go she might have to sacrifice the queen back Oh, but that endgame is going to be really bad news for white because while well, the E3 pawn is weak, the A2 pawn is weak. And that black rook on C4 can infiltrate down to C1 or to the side, down to A4. Gunina blundered rook to E8. And with only three seconds, the women's world champion was able to spot 
that the rook on d1 is undefended and i don't see a different move for white she might have to play queen takes rook or maybe queen takes knight is a better version of that sacrifice no she's gonna move back to f4 gunan is gonna keep her queen at all costs oh with two seconds left ju and jun just didn't have the time to capture white's rook on d1 and instead she went g5 she allowed a check she allowed a trade oh white's gonna win queen d6 check what a move king g7 another check on h5 that's forced mate that's forced mate knight h5 is made in two knight h5 is mate in two moves and she finds it and ju and jun stops the clock and graciously extends her hand she almost came all the way back down a queen but just didn't quite have enough time to deliver the final blow all credit to valentina good enough for keeping pressure on the board and on the clock what a game One pawn, five suspects. Bring your deductive skills to the chessboard this March and help solve the mystery. Was it the movie star, Tina Tempo? The heiress, Beatrice Bishop? The green pawn's coach, Remy Rook? Tournament organizer, Madame Mate, perhaps? Or the arbiter, Professor Passant? Play them all, gather the clues, and find out who done it on chess.com. Mate is in four moves from the position in front of you. Don't move until you figure it out in your head. Don't look at me for a hint. I can't do it without moving the pieces. Yes, you can. Clear the lines of men in your head, one at a time, and the king will be left standing alone, like a guy on a street corner. I'll make it easier for you. What was that about? I thought it would help. How does that help? You know, visualization and stuff. I'm not picking up the pieces. Sometimes you don't need to do anything crazy to get better. You just need to reassess your chess. I'm Grandmaster Maurice Ashley, and I'm presenting Jeremy Silman's How to Reassess Your Chess, now on Chessable. So go to chessable.com slash your chess and start reassessing your chess today. Any good chess tactics book has one pattern in it that feels like it is on a completely different level than all of the other tactical patterns. Bearing the vivid and accurate moniker, the windmill, this pattern features an amazing sequence of repeated discovered checks that can be used to win a nearly unlimited amount of material. The most famous windmill is definitely the one played by Mexican prodigy Carlos Torre against former world champion Emmanuel Lasker. But Bobby Fischer's Game of the Century also features a windmill. Here's another one that I really like. White starts with a rook sacrifice that leads to a combination of bishop and rook checks that simply consume black's forces. The Lafong is a dirty, dirty trick that will probably only work at bullet, but you have to pull it off at least once in your life. When you sense that your opponent is pre-moving g6 and bishop g7 to start the game, you can play d4 and bishop h6 to try to win the bishop on g7. Shakes, guys. No one is watching. Oh, they all missed that. I see the tilt. I can feel the tilt. <laughs> <laughs> it is a high risk and high reward strategy because you are hanging your own bishop if you don't catch them in a pre-move. But it is certainly hilarious when you do pull it off. Like one of my friends, uh, Asios, he made a um, bot. The reporter was ba partly based on hyperbolic games. So then you can see a lot of the Lafong, some Queen C2 takes H7 and so on. <laughs> yeah. so.
Welcome back everybody. Round number six of the Greg Chess Classic is about to begin with the clash of the leaders. Magnus Carlsen against Richard Rapport. We also have Ding Liren vs MVL and the German encounter Daniel Friedmann vs Vincent Keimer. This looks like it's a preview of the knockout stage. We have 1 vs 2, 3 vs 4, 5 vs 6. There's Alexis Sarana in his favorite Balmain hoodie, one of the top stars in the Open tournament, sitting down on stage. In We're the waiting for the kickoff. How was your break, Lawrence? A good break? Well, I actually got some bad news. Oh, no. I went to the VIP room, but you need to get yourself be nice. a little VIP ticket oh. band. We'll get you one. Golden ticket? Yeah, golden ticket. Uh, there was nothing in there, but I did manage to get an apple juice. Uh, so it's been a pretty good break. Any VIPs in there? There was uh, a few of the tournament sponsors. Uh, Daniel Friedman was there. Um, yeah. Sounds nice. Yeah, it was, it was quite but nice. No food? No food. <laughs> Where's the food? There's, there's no the, food. There's, there's like no 3,000 people in here. <laughs> yeah, we need food. Yeah. Uh, there's Daniel. Daniel, I think uh, he was in there with his wife and kid. Uh -huh. And uh, he is playing white against Vincent. Cool. Should be uh, an interesting round, but that, that was a long round, I believe. Think so? The last one felt long, but mm -hmm. maybe not. Maybe it's just our perception. No, it depends on the number of moves. Normally it will take around two hours, but we have 170 moves game. Then it can go a little longer. They have to start real late. And, but no, no rest for Richie. Black against Magnus. Messed up your black game against MVL. Now you're black against Magnus. Indeed. And Magnus goes for knight f3. He's, he's playing it all classical. Richie is not a blocker. And c5. Also feeling aggressive. Maybe it's going to be Benoni day. Another Benoni. Not very often that you play the Benoni with black. Then you come back for your white game. You get the Benoni too. It's making a comeback. Magnus will choose, I would guess, a different line. Although maybe he feels inspired by Vincent and revisit this setup. But now he plays h3. Well, after bishop g7, e4. We have a well-known theoretical line and he's probably relying on Rapport, not being super booked up there in the critical lines after e4 castles, bishop to d3. Then black can try to force the issue with pawn to b5 but it requires a lot of knowledge. Oh no, he goes bishop e3, not bishop d3. This is a position you more regularly get via a king's Indian move order. Mm. So it could be that Magnus knows it from there. In general, he knows, he knows his stuff. Something like this. This mouse is very slow, so I always need like Ten minutes to show any line. This is how you typically get this. Anyway, no one cares. There should be three <laughs> pointers after rook e8. You go knight d2, and you already have your bishop out, which is what happened. Yeah. And a6 played by Rapport. I guess you go a4. Yeah, but now. Um According to my notes, you can take on e4 here. But uh -huh. Engine also says so. Well, I use the engine for my notes. And uh, it's an interesting line to take on e4. Uh -huh. But it's nothing special because you take with the c knight, uh -huh. and then the idea is f5. Uh -huh. And if you move the knight, then f4 comes. And that is good for black. Uh -huh. So you don't do that, but you just ignore it. Uh -huh. You play bishop e2. And he does Rapport take does on take. e4. Wow, he knows this stuff. Yeah, but so does Magnus. 
f5, and he's just going to he's just going to ignore it with bishop e2. He's not going to take on d6 here. Um, he's going to close the e file with bishop e2, f4. Then he's going to plant the knight on c4 at some point, uh, and he's going to just claim that he's much better. And I think this is honestly really poor decision by Richie strategically just look feels like this is about as good a uh, Benoni you can get a, from the white side unless bon bon. who white yeah yeah but you've got squares yeah and squares, mm -hmm. squares. I, we spoke about this yesterday yes chess is not about pieces it's about squares oh so what squares is it b6 C4, A5? Well, Goodness. I for the B6 square. Yeah, does make sense. It's not his first rodeo. But yeah, it's a very risky choice against Magnus. Could be that it wasn't so much to mix it up, but that Richard didn't like his chances if he played something quote unquote normal in the Catalan or whatever. Maybe just like Spinoli's. He did it against Ding as well. Maybe it's his thing. Why is every game a Benoni now? It's good for white. <laughs> Why does everybody do this? <laughs> okay, this is a better version, I will admit. But still. Ah, this is uh, an anti Grunfeld Benoni. Wow. You know your opening names. Do I? A5. Well, Richard must have, of course, prepared this. Yeah, he had a long break. But this is um, about as ugly as it gets strategically for black. Because of the squares? The squares. B5, B6, D6. A pawn up. Go here. Yeah, but I'm going to put the bishop on F4. You're going to have to go passive. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. You can, you can get away with it. Why well, it has to be very fast? You mm -hmm. can't just mince around here. You, you, you do have to be fast here. Mm -hmm. To use the squares. Yeah, because <coughs> of course. So let's see. What could happen? Like bishop f4 is logical, bishop f8 logical. This is classy. Rook a3. Rook swing. Yeah. That's no, a total mess. I'm not, not sure who's better or why. Queen f6. Okay. Bishop f5. I could easily win. Rapport doing his Benoni homework. And Magnus seems well, rattled as strong, but he has to take a moment. A5 caught him by surprise. Freitman Keimer. All these Germans, they play knight f3, g3. <laughs> yeah, this line. B5. Yeah. Hmm. I looked at this once. It was a bit unpleasant for black. Um, should d2, threatening to come here. Let's see, 6, knight e5. Daniel knows his stuff. Yeah. Ah, but queen just as I said, he goes queen b3. Also, also interesting. Text the bishop. Rook a7. He could take and then go d5, but it's not, it's not Vinny's style. I think he's going to play okay, so. Yep. And now... Uh, At what point will his haircut start messing with his ability to see the chessboard? We're not that far away, right? It's <laughs> curtains. <laughs> yeah. 
But he's okay. He's not totally unhappy here, I guess, but ever so slightly better for white. Uh -huh. So like zero twenty six, the neighborhood. Somewhere between zero twenty one and zero thirteen. Oh. Just a wild guess. MVL has put his pawn on c4, which is always an interesting thing to do in a Benoni. And he's going for a walk, saying, I studied this in great detail in my laboratory. Rook fc8. Yeah, I always like white, but. Then they activate their pieces and they checkmate me. No. Not in this not in this position. There's no checkmate in sight. I yeah, really like white. Well I really like white here. Feels like one of those Benonis which if white gets in A five and you can surround this pawn on C four, it just looks gross. Yeah, this guy's a little yeah. Yeah. weakish. Yeah, but this yeah. Yeah. rook a five. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I just played rook a five here. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll probably go here. Yeah. <laughs> you do choose very good moves. Okay, let's go back yeah. to the clash of our leaders. Magnus Carlsen against Richard Rapport. Richard Rapport from Hungary, representing Romania. A lot of strong players. Switch to the Romanian Federation with the support of Superbet there. A lot of money coming into Romanian chess. Kirill Shevchenko also joined the team. Livio Di Tirnesi Piano who used to play for Germany, is back to Romania. Oh, I didn't know that, actually. Okay. And Richard Rapport. The Hungarian, also playing for Romania. But he's very well known around these parts because he also plays for the Baden Baden team and has for quite a while. So Richard is no stranger to Southwest Germany. Time to play queen b6. Whoa, so clinical. No queens for you, Mr. Keimer. Anyway. Castles upon down. He has squares, but it's a weird position. I'm not sure how happy he is. Because white has to play dynamically. If he just chills, then the knight shows up on b4. Bishop comes out. Bishop f4 on the board. Bishop f8 has to be played. And ah. we see. Is there any merit here in not castling? But you can't go crazy here, I don't think. Of course, I wanted to play h4, but. How, how ridiculous, I guess it's just insanely ridiculous to go h4 here. Nah, but probably a bit much. It just goes knight a6. Yeah, five, then bish g5. bishop g5. Yeah, bishop e7. Queen d2. Yeah, b4. Yeah, rook a3. Yep. And just. If you want to, you can do it. Should we put it on the board so that people can? Mm, not sure it's worth putting. Okay. Oops. Uh, let's take the bishop. This is what we were talking about. Just loses. 
Because there's some 93, yeah. Very unfortunate that there's some random 93 that wins. Such it's luck. <laughs> After you claimed all these squares. <laughs> I wanted to try and make something. He goes rook a3 first, knight a6. Yeah. On the board. <coughs> Getting some info that a5 was a novelty by Injic in the Chennai Olympiad. Wow. And that the computer depth likes this and says it's equal. Marine wrote a big article about this. About this exact so position? Apparently. Big, big debate in the Benoni fan club about this stuff. Rapport. Well, Rapport, stuff. Rapport should know a lot from, from Marine, right? Why? Aren't, aren't they both from Romania, or am I going insane? Yeah, but I well, don't know a lot from Friedman, and we're both German. Well, yeah, but Romania is a lot smaller in the chess, what, the, the Romanian chess I world. I don't think Keimer played Queen C7. Um, I think he did. Took on b6, knight takes. Okay, it's a bit dry. We can stay here. Yeah, staying here looks good. <coughs> um, so knight a6, so the critical moment now for Magnus. Is he going to castle? Or is he going to play rook g3? What about rook g3 and h4, just caveman style? That's possible. Once again, you will have your 93 issues. Yeah. Yeah, but this, yeah. King f1, bishop f5, yeah. yeah or well, knight takes f4. No, I was thinking about taking on d3 first and then, uh, you know, something like rook g3, yeah, rook g3, knight b4, but eight. Really, I can't allow this knight d3. No, you really yeah. should not. No, this is too much. No. I mean, I would play king f1 because I'm just such a caveman, but... Yeah, but can we stop lo looking at losing positions after pawn to h4? Magnus does castle. Castle is much better. You know, the king, it gets the safety and you also activate the rook. It's mm -hmm. like feeding two birds with one scone, as right. we say in right. 2024. <laughs> with one scone. Knight b4, and if rook e3? That's, that's a question. So the threat here is, there isn't a direct threat. No, Just something really like... f3 is looming. Like it's a little short on development on this side of the board. Mm. But apparently there's b5. Allez. Yeah, this is extremely sharp. And Magnus goes for the more... Classical queen, queen d2. d2. Just get the pieces out. Probably too early for b5 now, although it's still interesting. But no, no, it does not work. Why exactly? Oh, now bishop g5 is strong. Yeah. Just takes. And computer is very happy for white. Okay. So. What should Rapport do? Bishop f5 looks logical, b6 looks logical to maybe swing this rook over. b5 also looked logical to me, but it doesn't seem to work. Richie thinking. Tricky for both sides, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Let's briefly check in with the world champion Ding Liren facing Mon Ami Francais. Maxime Vachy Lagrave, Maxime gave the bishop typical thing in these structures if you get the chance. Because this light square bishop doesn't contribute to the fight for the e5 square. That's what they told me in chess school. So it's often a good idea to get rid of it. Because it's all about the e5 square. Took the A rook, put the other one here. And now he gives the pawn. Going for jumps. But he's a pawn down. 
Yeah, I think his idea is that he wants to... Uh, ah, he can actually take on c3 here. And if bishop takes c3, knight e4. And I think you'll find, and if b takes c3, you can take on d5. So I think... This looks worse, c4, queen b3, rook b1. Yeah. Maybe bishops. This guy can always go here. This I like white. Yeah, I can get behind that. So would ding. Yeah. Maybe he has to take here and back, but uh, it's not terrible. But also not fully equal. Something like this. Takes, takes. Yeah, it's not the end of the world with the opposite color bishops and the active guy on g7. But he's a pawn down. He must be feeling good after he won that last game against Rapport, putting him right back in the tournament. If he makes a solid draw now against the so far somewhat lackluster Ding, then still all to play for. Agreed. B6 play by Rapport. Guys playing well here. Also preparing bishop a6. Did you watch the movie Doom Part 2? Um, no. Doom I, Part 1? I haven't seen Doom, no. Neither. Oh, okay. Neither film. I, I played Doom years ago. Dune. D-U-N-E. Oh, Dune. No, I've not seen it either. Okay. Good? It's quite good. Yeah. Uh, I recommend it. Who's in it? Everybody's in it. Every Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Austin Butler, all the cool kids. They're too cool and new for me to... Stellan Skarsgård. Stellan Skarsgård? Stellan Skarsgård. You don't know Stellan Skarsgård? I really Do don't. Know. Should I? Yeah, he's, he's quite well known. Okay. But I'm asking. Because there's this, there's this noble house, sort of the heroes of the movie, the, the Harkonnens, they're called. Mm -hmm. And optically, they resemble your current style strongly. Especially there's this one character, Feidrather Harkonnen. Mm -hmm. He looks like a young Lawrence Trent, played by big new star Austin Butler, who recently played Elvis. Okay. So, yeah, he looks he looks just like you. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, yeah, please do. B six on the board. Uh huh. Still, Magnus taking the the, the jacket off. It's go time. <laughs> yeah, difficult difficult one to to know exactly what to do here. Rook g3. Rook g3 is kind of just the, the move that uh, the hand brings the rook across quite naturally. Uh -huh. But the problem is it's an unrefined move. It doesn't actually do anything. Uh -huh. What's a refined move? I don't know. In this position, tough to play for white. Yeah. Actually. Well, black smooth are a bit easier. Should I six, rook a seven. Black still yeah. pawn up. Black has all these squares. Yes. Benoni seems like a great opening. It's a good opening. I don't know why it's got such a bad reputation. Mm, it's pretty terrible, especially <laughs> after knight c3. With knight f3, less terrible. Huh? So you think the lines with f4 are just very strong? Not just the lines with f4, but like there's many, many great lines here. Oh yeah, the ones with f4 are the most challenging. I usually play knight e2, which I also like, but f4 is very strong here. And this is why. After knight f3, it's played more often and less brazen. 
Perhaps the knight c3 where Magnus did, he must have had a pretty strong read that Nelson wouldn't do anything too funky. And yeah, rook g3 played, great minds think alike. Very logical. No, he goes rook a7 first. And now, now finally. it's time for your, for your h4 move. Yeah, it's kind of Setting logical. a devious trap. Kind of logical. Boom. But e3 here, it's not over, <laughs> ironically. Oh, it continues. Yeah, e3 and it really continues. Because uh, how do you take? Rook takes sort of wins, no? <coughs> Ah, oh, this wins? Singing. Oh, right, okay. Uh, yes, okay. Yeah, that sort of wins. Okay, so I expect h4 by Magnus here, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, because... Also, what else here? You've got yeah. to make something happen. Mm, now there's no longer a 93 check. <coughs> f3, maybe you think about... Not sure how well that mixes with rook to g3. Yeah, h4 plate. Yeah, yeah. This is, Here this he is goes. This is Magnus style. h4? Yeah. Don't see him playing lots of h4s. Hmm? That's the best move, so that is the style. Hmm. <coughs> Rapport, digging in. <laughs> Do you see the Rapport Kurt Cobain comparisons? Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen them in meme form, but like. I can. Im I, we were speaking about them years ago. Oh. He has got a unique style for chess, that's, that's for sure, has Richie. Okay, h4, I like it. I think uh, now, not easy for black at all. I guess you go rook f7, that's the most... No, I don't think, rook I don't think you put the bishop... Yeah, rook f7, h5, bishop f5. Mm. I'm sure I love the bishop here. I, d I don't like it on a6, though, because when I go b3, you're just kind of... Yeah, well, come on, let's get rid of it. Mm. We, will, we will see Okay. which way... Rapper way moves. of the bishop. Yeah. Meanwhile, in uh, Friedman against Kaima... Uh, Daniel is, is enjoying himself, putting some mild pressure, got rid of the queens early. Chill. You think this is fun for Daniel? Yeah. You think he's enjoying, enjoying himself? I think he's enjoying himself. It's two out of five, which I'm sure he's not thrilled about, but it's, it's not a disaster. He's shown he can play with these guys. He's going to rep it. He doesn't have a lot of pressure. I think he's having a great time. I guess making some money, what's not to like? Yeah, I mean, winning the Open here is actually massive, isn't it? Because you win the prize from the Open, which is not small. And then you get an entry to this, where you get a minimum takeaway, so... It's takeaway? A minimum prize guarantee. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they are, do you? I have no idea. But it'll be decent. So, fair play to him. Fair play to him. No, he's a good guy. And yeah. As you know, chess is a grind with all these rep tournaments, open tournament leagues and so on. It's always good to get in from payday. Happy to see Diane do well. Of course, not at Vinnie K's expense. Look how sad Vinny looks. Yeah, he's he had a long, tough game against Magnus. A long day. He's had a long day. He's 
now slightly worse against a grinder. Um, you know, I I think Vinnie Kay's chances of he looks tired. That's what tired. I was worried about with the starting time. Yeah, Vinnie needs his, uh, his he needs steady. He needs his three p.m. start. Be done at seven. Have a little dinner. Go for a walk. Back to the hotel. What's what's your uh, routine going to be at, as captain of the German team with Vinnie K on board one? Can you can you give us a little insight into? Sure. We'll have a negotiation. <coughs> he will say, I can rest the first three games and then play the rest. Then two games max and then you play the rest. And then, other than that, not much. You wait till the round is over. And then. Normally, you have a little team dinner. Normally, it's some buffet and whatever random hotel you stay in. Then, you wait for the pairings to come out. Then, we discuss the lineup. Although, I don't like discussing, because it's always a bunch of whining. So, normally, my own demand is I decide the lineup and let's be done with it quickly. Then, if we want to hang out or de debate opponents, we can do it after. So, I tell them, okay, Rasmus, you get black as usual. Um, <laughs> Vincent, you play, um, and then people start preparing. Sometimes I'll help a little bit, sometimes I won't, depending on circumstances, what's needed. Then you reconvene in the morning. Some guys show up at breakfast, like Vincent, which is why it's very hard for him to play so late. He's an early bird. Mm -hmm. Then you check how prep is going. As a captain, you have to remember to hand in your lineup till 10 a.m. <laughs> a lot of responsibilities. Then you have like lunch together at 1.30 or 1, depending on how far you have to go. Then the game starts at 3. You sit there for five hours, read your book, rinse and repeat. That's right. You like to stay in the hall and read, don't you? You gotta. You have to stay there, right? Well, you don't have to read. Sounds like a dream job. It is a dream job. Well, you, the Germans have got... Uh, what, are your, what are your hopes for the Olympiad? Let's talk about that. Do you have any specific goals or expectations? Hmm. I just want um, everybody to get along with each other. Hmm. <laughs> Results, of course, matter, but mainly, I feel these young adults, I want them to develop a sense of community, enjoy each other's company, wow. don't take it for granted, embrace the culture. It's not just all about medals, ratings. I have a more holistic approach to my company. Fantastic. No, I'm kidding. I should win a medal so I can brag about my, my great coaching skills. Is winning a medal a realistic? It's tough, but <clears throat> what goals can you set? <clears throat> I don't know, that'd probably be the number, like let's say 10 seat. As high as 10? I don't know. Maybe. A lot of strong countries out there. Yeah. China, India, the US and A, right. India. Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan. Also very strong, but they didn't impress in the European team championship. France, they play with Ayreza and Maxim, fantastic team. Uzbekistan, I think, won last time. England? Yeah. <laughs> Kelly, fantastic team. Now reinforced with Nikita Vitugov. Yeah, born and bred. Um, Essex own. <laughs> H1 Rook F7 played. Rook F7, you were right again. Well, I kind of have a good feel for where the pieces can go in these structures. I played a lot of Benoni's. That was a bad move. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. I never said I played the positions well. I just have a feel for where people might play. Uh -huh. Okay, Rook F7, so Bishop G5. So what's the benefit of going bishop g5 here? Text queen? Yes. 
And bishop e7 is no good because, yeah, now h5 and bishop f5. But you've got this knight e3 move always. Okay, but something like this looks logical enough. It's anybody's game. Yeah. Really is. So are you coming to the Vimpit? Will you will you be coaching some team there? Yes. Uh -huh. Which team? Top secret. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, I'm not coaching a team at all. Mm. I have been asked to come. I have to iron out some details next week. I don't think I can, though. Busy guy. Just because, theoretically, I'm employed, so it's a bit mm -hmm. more tricky. Hans is back again. Yeah, Hans is just floating around the <laughs> top tables. Is he he's playing just, or is it just hanging out there? He, he wants to give the impression that he, you know, he belongs there he is. with the crowd. Yeah, so, uh, but the Olympiad, we went Tromso 2014. Oh. You remember? I do remember. Ten years ago. Time goes by. We had a great show. <laughs> it was good. Was it? I yeah. I don't remember that. Kasparov came on. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do recall. We had a lot of fun. I think that was the year, did China win it that year? Yes. Yeah. So, in this game here, Friedman against Keimer, mm -hmm. uh, not much going on. No, it's peaceful. I guess you go for some B4. E4, E4 is a very... Break. Before it's too late. Yeah, this makes some sense. E4 is committal, of course, so you mm. better be sure. But it looks logical. Takes, takes, then we have D4. Mm -hmm. A6, we can also take. But E4, Daniel, I don't know, he likes his bishops to have a clear view. So maybe, it's not his style, maybe he'll, you know, shuffle his horsey, put some rook here, go B4. Something along these lines. <clears throat> so for the many chess fans that came to Karlsruhe, you're basically a local at this point. You've been here many times. Do you have any, any recommendations, like favorite spots? To In Karlsruhe? Yeah. Spots no. to go, restaurants, bars, sightseeing. I like the uh, bar, the hotel bar of Novotel. It's pretty good mm -hmm. across the street. Mm -hmm. That's all right. But I don't know Karlsruhe that much at all because when you're in this chess world, you're just kind of. When I used to, at least when I played here, you play two games a day: one in the morning, one in the afternoon slash evening, and that's the whole day gone. And by the end of the day, you're pretty tired. That's true. You eat and then you go to bed and it's rinse and repeat. This is not the island of Ibiza. Huh? Not quite. No, it's a great tournament. Uh, you can see there are live footage of just how big it is. That's just one hall. There's another hall. There is another big. huge hall. Uh, so. But big fan of, of obviously this tournament. Uh, don't know much about the city. Oh, okay. I've been around Baden Baden a bit more, but that's not really here. It's not it's even not that far. How far are we? Would you say? No, Thirty-five minutes by car. So okay. Yeah. Baden Baden is very cute. <coughs> I've definitely been around Baden Baden a bit more. 
Uh, and Wiesbaden, I've been around, but I don't know how far that is. That's probably a bit further out as well. More towards Mannheim, is it, I think? What about Baden in Austria? Baden in Austria? Yeah. No. No, no. Do you view? I've been there, no, it sounded like you had a preference for Baden, Baden, Wiesbaden, so I thought. Baden Just anything with the Baden? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Baden no. is also the German word for taking a bath. Right, exactly. And Wies is the word for. Grass? Yeah. Grass bath. Not true. <laughs> Salt bath. Are you a fan of baths in general? I like the idea, and sometimes I do it, but normally I get bored sort of quickly. Mm. What were we talking about? Taking a bath or yeah. bath? Taking a bath. You know, laying yeah, there in the no, hot water. Sometimes I do it, but normally, you know, life's very stressful. Right. Sometimes when I have stuff to do later, I feel I'm sleepy. I should take a bath and it's going to re rejuvenate me. Yeah, it just makes me more sleepy. Mm. Van Drum, I think, is a good thing. I never understood this Bill Burr bit about one shouldn't bath. He's wrong. But I like the, I like the inner peace. Bishop G5 played. Well, the good news is we're getting all the moves right. Yeah. Amazing. But Richard's still a pawn up, got a lot of pieces over the king's side, so. That's a decision. So go here or here. I, I, three seven, a little risky, of course. I'm not sure how risky it is. Like bishop e7, what's the big deal? Nothing, I guess we take and go h5. Okay, takes. Ah, I can't take with the queen because b6 is hanging. If I take with the eight rook, it's possible. It's possible. And if bishop f5, which is the logical way to develop the pawn. Yeah, I guess. Ah, I this runs into too. bishop g4. And if bishop takes g4, you take on g6. Oh, Zwischenzug. Yeah. And then you take back. And even this it didn't feel clear cut at all. No. Nope. So I don't think Richard has, has got any reason to be overly concerned right now. Uh, still mildly scary. Long term king safety. Robert. He looks stressed. Which one is it? <laughs> yeah. Um, not straightforward at all. Not straightforward at all. Should briefly check in with the ding. Of course. VL game. Of ding course. Still a pawn up. Yeah. Still chipping away. VL has nice active pieces, but it's never fully equal. It healthy extra point for white. So MVL, French school of suffering, full effect. Yeah, it's a quiet around so far. Yeah, cut. Could heat up, but yeah, and Friedman Keimer, we have a quietish. Even that could gain. That could even heat up at the right moment. Yeah, 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 sure. Rook comes to c1. Rook. I mean, I love White's position, by the way. Mm -hmm. Of course, it could be completely wrong that I love it, but you can't control what you love. Can you not? No. What do you love? Mm. Tough question. Mm, I'm more of a hater. <laughs> it's a problem. Anyway, I love Ding's position. Yeah, I knew. I know. Extra pawn. Yeah. 
a thousand years ago, 345. Yes. And Rapper yeah. has played Bishop to E7. Yeah. Now the question is, which rook is he going to take with that? Probably will go with the F rook. But I think going with the E rook is not, not insane. Um, Knight c7 by Vincent Kamer. We'll see what Richard does here. I think he's going to take with the... Out of the rooks? I guess, I guess the e rook. The e rook? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes more sense, I think. Use both of them. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, we'll keep it on that. Let's go to Friedman again. These games in the open tournament, by the way, they're on stage. Is that already the second round? Is the open tournament rapid, or is that still the first? No, that's round? that's that's classical. For sure. So they only play one round today, then. I would guess so. Yes. So they play one round today. Then tomorrow is a day off, and then they start playing two games. They might even have three games or something. Or do they play tomorrow? It's just a ah, broadcast and there's... They might play tomorrow. Probably play tomorrow, no, if not. Would yeah, be they, yeah. I think yeah. it's just you can't broadcast anything, which is why the, the classic has its rest. Yeah. But I could be wrong about this. No. Yes. Um, Yeah, hmm. it's uh, it's a tricky one. This uh, this whole round is a bit tricky. I've got no clear feeling. The only clear feeling I've got is I don't think Daniel or Ding. Well, well I, Ding is just not going to lose. Wow. He took with the queen. Oh. Why? That's uh, leaving this guy on prise. Magnus starts with h5, saving the pawn and attacking here. Why would you take with the queen? He doesn't respect the pawns. So what's the idea? So there has to be some big idea. No, it just gets its pawn. Harmonious, I guess, but this is a serious pawn to your hand. Cause yeah, because a5 is weak. And very bizarre decision here by Richard, in my opinion. Man, he's also tired. Had a long, tough game last round, which didn't end the way he would have liked to end, mm. the way he thought, probably, because it was better for most of it. Mm -hmm. Now he's black against Magnus. Magnus looking fresh, rested, putting pressure. But let's see. Yeah, I agree. Um, <coughs> What's going on there? Who's Who's standing behind him? That's it's Dean. probably Hans. That's Dean. Richard feeling a bit of pressure here, you can tell he's it's not in the heat. He's not overly happy. No. He looks tired. Meanwhile just Yes, yeah. Well I've said it many times it messes with players if by you change the starting time of the games by four hours later. So everybody's a bit off their internal clock now. Mm -hmm. It's not like chess players go to sleep at 10 p.m. but once your body gets used to get up in the morning, get have breakfast, prepare, play at 3, then it's very, very hard to switch around to 7 p.m. What's your favorite time to play chess? Never. <laughs> Will you be doing the Thailand Open again? I don't know. Okay. It's now in April. Check it out. Hua Hin, Sheraton Hotel. Looks absolutely beautiful. 
Mm. So go to bangkokchess.com and check out the, I think technically it's called Bangkok Chess Club Open. Should be mid-April. I hope it's going to be bigger than this tournament. Absolutely fantastic location. Bigger? Yeah, normally it's like around 200, 300 people. But might as well go bigger. Make it 3,000. <laughs> no, I'm not sure I'll make it there, but it, the yeah. hotel looks amazing. Hua Hin is an amazing city. I very much recommend it, of course. Mm. But now, I guess, yeah, 3 p.m. makes sense as a start time. I'm also fine with 2 p.m. because normally I don't have lunch. So you go get what about place. 10 a.m. on a Sunday morning? Yeah, it's not my favorite. Dreadful. Okay. Magnus back at the board. There he is. Mission zero. Richard seems to have doubts if he should go rook g7 or bishop f5, which I guess is what he's thinking about, because he has to cover that pawn. Rook g7 looks a bit unnatural, but, natural, but it's the computer's favorite way. Yeah, bishop f5 is what humans do. Magnus will probably snack that pawn. That's still a mess. I don't even hate his decision to give that point. Doesn't want to defend. So, if he doesn't take that pawn, does he want to go bishop g4? But it's possible. Yeah, That's because a pawn. it is a it pawn, is but it's not. Well. It's not going anywhere, and this actually. Re generates the threat mm -hmm. of the pawn on g6. That is true. I like bishop g4. Um, yeah, I like bishop g4. The uh -huh. only th the only thing is well. Does the knight ever land on d3? This is the question. And that is a question. Should we be concerned? It's two questions. That, <laughs> it's two questions. Um, How's Vincent doing? Is he hanging in there? Yeah, he's hanging in there. You can also give a check first and then take on g2 with check, but I'm not sure the extra tempo does anything. Me Mean neither. Well, yeah, it looks equal. Meanwhile, Magnus plays bishop g4. Oh. Putting pressure. Mm. Take. Take. Now, if might be 6, I have e3 at least. Yeah. Solve the problems. Assuming there are any problems, but probably he's not going to go knight b6. He's going to do some Magnusy thing. Yeah, rook e1. This rook takes e4 is definitely not completely ridiculous in some positions. No, I'm not. still sharp. This pawn is also here. Yeah. yeah it's a tough fight. Tough one. Very tough. It's toughy. Well, toughy. MBL is just trying to hang on here. Yeah, but him, since Ding offered him a draw a while ago, it, it went. Oh no, up. wait, they drew! Yes. Surprising Excuse me. draw for it by Ding. Wow. It doesn't, okay. doesn't seem to be 
putting max pressure, no? Like, <laughs> yeah, the draw offer is definitely not putting max pressure. I mean, I guess they found a way to repeat moves, but he already did a quick white draw against Rapport. I guess his confidence mm. is not where it used to be, mm. where it should be, because he was always a big fighter in here. He's a pawn up, it's more or less a free roll. So what do you think has happened to Ding then? What, what, what's your interpretation of why he's playing so below his level? I don't know, I'm not so comfortable speaking about it because I don't know very much. You hear rumors that he had uh, some health problems okay. from sleeping that he's talked about, but I honestly don't know. It looked like there were things either outside chess or maybe connected to the pressure or the self-imposed pressure of being the world champion that made his life not so easy. But I honestly don't know him. I'm just a fan, so I'm happy see him back in action, but clearly he's not at the level he used to be. But also I'm not sh once again I'm not sure, but I would guess the pandemic hit him very hard, mm -hmm. not just when it comes to not being able to travel, but also I'm assuming he spent a lot of time alone in some flat here, which could have been all that pleasant. I don't know, I'm speculating here. I don't know, such a nice guy, such a strong player. So. Let's give him some time. Who have you got winning for the candidates, by the way? I don't know. Very hard to read. I think your boy Fabi had a pretty good 2023. Yeah, He's very been good there, done that as well. Yeah. So I guess it's the name that comes to mind. The publisher he won the last two candidates. So he's certainly been there, done that. Mm. I can't really judge these kids. It feels early for like the Gukesh Pragnananda. Well, obviously, there are tremendous players. Hikaru, I'm pretty sure, is very motivated. Think of all the clicks if he gets the World Championship. Wow. I mean, he would have a confession booth. Like, <clears throat> it would be amazing. So, I'm pretty sure he's taking it quite seriously. Very, very hard to predict, but I guess you gotta start with. Fabi and the Pomnashi, because they are the guys who've, who've done it. Fair enough. Fair play. And so Abasov, your... I don't think he's going to do terribly, but yeah, he's, he hasn't done spectacularly ever since that right, okay. World Cup. And yeah, of course, a bit of an outsider in that field. Ali Reza, maybe it's Ali Reza time. He <coughs> learned his lesson last time around. Could be so many, so impossible to call it actually. Seems impossible. Okay, takes takes on the board. Takes takes. And Six. it looks a bit passive. Looks like Richie is not in the mood for passivity. Maybe this is more. More up his alley. Wow. I actually love that. What is this suggestion here of rook takes e4? Oh, that's movable. Ooh. Yeah, but is queen, e, queen e5? Comfy doesn't care. Okay, so. but. Such a sicko. <laughs> it's just. Can't argue with the computer. Just says it's winning. Rook d5, queen h6 in that line is just over. Yeah, that's unlikely. And let's see, rook f5 looks funky. Yeah. Could do. Uh, Friedman against Kaima is just very, very quiet. Not much going on here, guys. Equal material. Anybody said a word. There we see Vincent. Also looks tired. Poor boy. Oh, wow, so look at that. That's a signed. Has Hans. That's a, what's that? It's not a sign. Well, it is signed, actually, sorry. Uh -huh, it is signed. It is signed, yeah. What's the word you're looking for? Chessboard? Chessboard. Oh. I don't know where that is. Oh, that's somebody's purchased that, have they? Oh, I wonder what the MVL stands for. 
Does Rapport, does he have like a Z, like Zorro there? What's going on there? Yeah, what is that? Um, Keimer? Does, does he sign Keimer, Keimer? Yes. Or uh, those are the signatures and then someone wrote who it actually belongs to, I guess. But look, right? Neiman's on there. So most people don't sign their name in like these printed letters. <laughs> so those are the signatures and then someone wrote who it is. Now with all that stuff. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Can we buy it? Well, it looks like somebody already bought it. How? Why do you know? How? Because it's sitting by the bo uh, the chairs, the spectator chairs. Uh -huh. Maybe it's just someone brought a board and asked people to sign it. Also, need to buy it. Maybe it's a new business for you. I know you're very business savvy. Bring boards, have guys sign them, sell them. It's exactly the sort of idea I'm looking for. You're welcome. <laughs> Whoa! Rock G7 seems a long, according to Monsieur Computer. Rookie is one so is bad. just winning, why? One, just threatening to take him. Yeah. And rookie one's the most natural move in the world here. Yeah, that is very findable. Wow. Yeah, rook G7 also rook looks G7 wrong. Rook 7 feels like wrong, yeah. yeah. It's so much easier to just commentate on games. Yeah, it's so much easier to just <laughs> read out the computer moves and then criticize guys when <laughs> they don't make one. <laughs> We're not just reading out the computer lines. We've yes, got. We've got assistance, mm -hmm. but we're not. There's a, a view of the crowd. Look at that. 10.30 on a Thursday night, full house. Be bad. Look, we've got some real Where fans. Where are the parents? Ah, no, this is, I think, is this the German commentary? I think because you can wear headphones. And Klaus Bischoff is mm -hmm. giving the German commentary. I saw him in the, uh, in the elevator earlier. Oh. There's a guy who's just not changed. He's so chilled out, is Klaus Bishop. Yeah. Nice guy. Very nice guy. Do you know him well? Of course. Been around for a long time. He's been around for a long time. And he's got a very nice voice to listen to. Yeah. And these youngsters. Who are these people? I don't know, but it's 10.30 at night. I'm always shocked that there are actually people that enjoy chess and watching chess. Because you know I'm very negative, I hate everything in myself. <laughs> so whenever I see like this passion in people, like yeah. going somewhere to watch a thing, it confuses me. Shocks you, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Um, it's called being passionate. It's uh -huh. Yeah. I didn't look that passionate. What can make you refine your true love for this game? I don't know, it's tough. Tough now, huh? Mm. It's difficult because, frankly, I think some people just have it for a long, long time and the beauty of the game and so on. I've never had that. I've had this rush of learning new things when I was younger, but now it's not that easy anymore and it's difficult. It's difficult. And you're a dad, you have a family and... Okay, that, uh, <laughs> that can happen. But I still have it when I, I find like a new topic where I can absorb a lot of information quickly. Then I'm into it. But in chess it's getting tougher. Like just from a passion standpoint. Also from a playing strength standpoint, but mainly... Yeah, yeah. GH? R Ricky love. is just uh, self-destructing uh, here. Yeah, he wants to give the queen. Yeah. But it's not gonna work. Because takes, okay, rook takes e4. Capture, rook takes, knight d6, rook d4, but the white queen is just Just coming in, right? Queen anywhere. Just queen e2. We enter. Queen e2 is just really over, right? That's immediate resigns. C'est fini. Okay, maybe rook d4 isn't the most resilient, but the position is just collapsing. 
Ooh. Even here, look at this. Ooh. No, 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 no. This is, this is brilliant. Rook d5, queen e2. That's queen e8 nice. is mate. Threatening checkmate. Wow, that's... Oh, again. F4 is not an obvious move there. Well, a bit. Magnus can fight on a good day. And I think, yeah, we're already here. Take six takes. He's also going to take here for sure. And now, after a rookie five, I guess he wants rookie five. Because rook g4, rook even g4. just g3, and we have my five. That doesn't work. Rook d4, queen two is obvious. So I think rookie five is going to happen. Can I, after yeah, rookie, rookie five, five yeah, so f4 is the move here. F4 is crushing. But yeah, F4 is really crushing. Tricky. Yeah, I think he finds it actually. Um, because it does completely unbalance the black position. Because huh. the rook is. Is there any other move here that he could. Try. Like for me, the move queen h6 is somehow ridiculous because rook g6. It's yeah, just that makes no sense. But then queen f4. Is it? But what do you want on h6? I just want to go to f6 or, or just table, enter. Knight takes d5? Yeah, knight takes d5 is the problem. Yeah, yeah and I've got no tricks there. No knight at f5s, no nothing. Yeah, no, queen h6 is just utterly absurd. Hey, he just, it's just too good. He's good. He's just really good. Yeah, I think. <laughs> you could argue. The conclusion one usually comes to. He's the he best. He bad days, like he had yes. a bad day here on day one, and to some extent day two. But he's, he's really good. Yeah, and in fact, and this, also rook, this rook just doesn't have a square because rook e7, knight f5. The rook is out of squares. Wow, this is just resigns actually. Yeah, this is more or less over. This is just totally over. Knight f5 is just over. Rook d5 played, queen e2, and that's just going to be. The trick. That's it. Yeah, look. He played it with a. A panache. Pleased look on yeah. his face. So, what do you do? You go. At your face. And knight f5, yeah. Yeah, queens are strong. Just incredible. How many points do you think a queen is worth? Is it nine or ten? I often say nine. I used to say nine, but I think it's ten. It might be ten. It's not worth. We've been un to, undervaluing to her. Yeah. yeah. We've been wrong. Okay, h6 played. Yeah. But queen is six, not a five. You don't need to be Magnus Carlsen to spot those. And he is Magnus Carlsen. makes it look so easy. It's really infuriating. So it just makes fewer mistakes. I mean, it was a complicated position and unclear who was better, but he never did anything drastically bad. And at some point, people tend to collapse. Helps if you don't make mistakes when you play chess. Really does. Vinny? 95 king e8. Queen e6 on the board. Yeah. This is happening. Wow. Queen and knight, good attacking tandem, I've, I've heard. Yeah, they... So they do different things. They complete each other. Yeah. Is there a variant of chess where the queen also moves like a knight? And Rapper resigns, he's yeah. seen enough. Yeah, Janus chess. Oh, really? Yeah, uh -huh. no Okay. Uh, Rapport has had a bad day at the office. I think He's we can... had a bad day. We can say that. Two losses. Yeah. 
one from a winning position or a very good position? You can lose with Black to the world. Number one and number three in Rapid, but especially that game against MVL from a winning position. It was tough. And he loses the lead he had built up. It's now back to 50%. And Mr. Magnus, all of a sudden, on plus two. Just finds a way, doesn't he? Life finds a way. And we're left with this cracker. With the Germans. Vincent with the black pieces. Um, Have you considered calling him just Win or Vin? Vinny? No, just Vin. Just Vin? Yeah. No, I've not considered him just calling him Vin. But if you call him just Vin, you could save the cent. Yes, so that is true. Vin-Vin situation. <laughs> Very good. Um, Rook F2 played, good move. Excellent move. Covers the, the C2 square. I guess white is slightly, slightly better, but it's also kind of drawish. I would lose this to Vincent with white. He would do stuff. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know, something would happen with the pawns and then other stuff, and then I'd panic and then I'd hang some material. Yeah. That's what would happen. Yeah, you would. Um, if you go below 2600, mm -hmm. is it you just calling it a day, retiring? No, I was going to ask you, when you fell below 2400, like, uh, did it uh, did it hurt your uh, self-esteem or you just get did used to it and bit. you keep going? <laughs> yeah, did a little bit, yeah. Uh, yeah I'm a bit but we're back. It. We're really back, you know? Not by rating, but in spirit, right? Uh, uh, yeah, no. I mean, we're, spirit's been dead for years, but we're back by rating. Are you above 2400? Yeah, well Whoa, above. Oh, I wasn't yeah. aware of that. Congrats. Yeah. I think mm. I'm knocking on 2420-ish. Wow. Yeah. Sky's the limit. Unbelievable. No, I don't know. I'm worried about it because I've been playing so terribly recently. I might have to do some work on chess. No. Yeah, Never going to happen. Uh, it might happen, might happen. Really? I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it playing so badly. I don't like playing, but when I play playing so badly, I don't like it. I think some work might have to be done. But out of which hours do I take those? Out of my the exactly. office watching hours, out of my streaming hours, out of my gym hours, sleeping hours. Not probably. Out of my spending How time much with time the kids do you have? Yeah. It's amazing streaming, Wait, watching. Like, like uh, sixteen hours a day. It's pretty sick. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Um Okay, rook f two, bishop d six. Uh, is it's a very boring position. Make a draw, guys. Let's all go home. Yeah. Yeah. This is how you do it. King c six. Rook c two. King, King d seven. That's what we want. That's what the handshake. Ale. I think that's not completely unreasonable. The problem nah, is because you go king, king b5. Five, five, yeah, you don't go. <laughs> you don't go check after king c6. But what do you do actually? I don't know. There we see the masses. The masses under the king. Is there a chance to sit somewhere and listen to us via the headphones? I hope I'm not. not sure if they have us. I think they might just have the German commentary. Mm -hmm. And there we have the face of German chess. Mm -hmm. The Wunderkid, the real one. Mm -hmm. the, the Mozart. You think he's going for the Mozart? He's going for the man with the haircut? Yes, he looks like Mozart. Looks like the guy in the Mozart corner. Hold on, king e7. Can we get rook e2, Mozart. king d7? That's a, that's a nice repetition. More sign chessboards. You should get a nice chessboard tomorrow and just ask people to sign it. 
As a business idea? No, just you know, for your for private me? collection. When you, I don't. when you have the chicas come over, you can show them, look, this my chessboard was signed by MVL. Yeah, they're going to be really impressed. Yeah. No. That's always a, you know, a winner. It's a door opener. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we just get rookie to king d7? Or is he going to put his king on f7 or, or do something? There's still a lot of chess to be played. Look at Vincent. He's loving every second of it. So tired, poor Vincent. I think Daniel is also going to be tired. Nah, tired. Daniel's feeling good. Wow, look. They beat me to it. Oof. People must have been watching the show and picked up on my genius idea. They're really waiting for Vincent to finish. Vincent, all but your fans are questions. waiting. Don't yeah. keep them waiting. No. Trying to grind out this position. The real question is, do you think they will ask us to sign a chessboard when we no. go? They don't even know. I went to get this little bracelet. He didn't even know who I was. Yeah, okay. I really meant, will they ask me? Oh, right. <clears throat> no. Um, I'm also not sure. Like, sometimes you get some, some stuff like, can you sign on the backside? Like, not here where the good player is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't ruin the board. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> mm. But also, maybe I'm too aggressive about this thing I always say. All right, uh, I'm here. Let's do this. Who wants selfies? And then people ask, okay. Who are you? Hmm. <clears throat> Daniel. Oof. Wow, they're really waiting. Waiting for Vinny. I mean, they, th they must think that the game is over quick. Have you ever waited anywhere for anybody to, so that they could sign the stuff? Like... <clears throat> no. Not if you were at an M and M concert, would you wait Triv in the blistering cold for four hours? Trivia: Have I been to an M and M concert in my life? Probably yes. <clears throat> I'll say yes. No, I didn't. But I, okay. I was supposed to go. I had a chance when I was about thirteen, fourteen years old. Wow. Yeah, he was in the UK. Mm -hmm. and my friends went, and they had a wonderful time. Where didn't you go? I can't remember exactly, but I didn't go. I don't know if. It, I, I can't remember. I've so got some great right. stories that I'm going to tell you after the show. Ugh, no. But <laughs> I don't want to talk to you after the show. I know. Mm. Jan is not joking, guys. <laughs> he literally just blanks me. He just <laughs> completely ghosts me. Mm. It's, it's really poor. It's really bad. Knight C1. Beautiful. What's going on here? Great move. I'm, I'm not even sure if I can trust my eyes anymore. Does the computer say knight d4? Yes. So we cover that. So rook d4. Rook c2. Very deep. Rook c4. See, I would lose this so effortlessly. <laughs> right. Do I go h5? <laughs> it's just... Do I go h4? Do I go h3? I don't know. Yeah, I would lose this effortlessly as well to, to win some knight hmm. b3. Yeah, he's going to go h5 in here, you know. You just know he's going h5. He's going to just run his hat, his fingers through his bishop c7. Oh, bishop c7. He wants to relocate the bishop to b6 and cover a5. Yeah, and the white bishop is just not doing very much. Very difficult to find it good work here. Hmm. And h5 is coming at any moment. And yes. I think uh, it's a bit easier to play, but... King f3, knight d4, makes some sense. Time to bail out. What about just knight d4 immediately? That takes. Bishop takes. Oh, yeah. So Come on, guys. <coughs> Let's close the door. I heard you. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah king f3. C4, 
see what Daniel wants to do. Daniel could definitely lose his position. Anybody could lose. Now Vincent might fall asleep. Might be for play. Indeed. Do. Take. I think you probably have to take as rookie two just is annoying. Mm -hmm. So I think you do have to take. And then he's going to play king e6 to put his king on a light square. Mm -hmm. And then we start phase three. Yeah, king f3. It's still very Josh, of course. Just of take. course. Shuffling his bishop. bishop D6. Back and forth. Okay, now Daniel's going to play king f3. 100%. Yeah, and bring the king to d3. Why? It's not really in trouble. No. But he is going to play king f3 here. Mm -hmm. 100%? 95? Mm. It's a high percentage. I'm going to go for 100. King f3 played. Easy. And he's going to put the king on d3. And then uh, if the rook ever leaves the c file, you can even think about bishop c5 at some point. Mm -hmm. h5, he's going to. Why would leave the c file? Where's it going to go? It can't even leave. Daniel will now play. It's 50 50 between king e4, king e3, or king e2. I don't think he's playing king e3 just for. Or king e4, because you have to. Yeah. But yeah, it could, could be anything you're king right. King e2 is favorite. It's a tough choice. But I'm going to give king e3 32%. Yeah, so king e4 makes some sense. King e4. But he has to think about bishop e5. Ah, king e4, no, yeah. he'll play. Yeah, because bishop e5, yes. Well, then think. king d5, it's not such a complicated calculation. Right. Right, actually, you can win that king. King e4 pawn. threatens king d5. Yeah, king e4, so he'll play. Huh? And then Vincent will play king e6 regardless, and then king d1, king d3, rook c1, and then th that's the question what to do after that. Yep. So many questions. But maybe he's not going to d3 voluntarily. <coughs> oh, is he still giving me the look? So tired, but he's still giving him the Vincent Kaiman look. So what is the Vincent Keimer stare all about? There, there it is. Yeah, I can see it. Wow, intimidating. Yeah, it's very scary. Very scary. Um, <clears throat> Friedman in the tank trying to work out what he's going to do after that variation Make a move, Daniel. Come on. H3. H3. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> Why? He wants to go G4? He doesn't. He has chess culture, so he doesn't like his pawns fixed on That's the crazy. wrong color, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. But still, king to the middle. It's also supposed to be a good idea. I kind of like this decision, though, actually, by Daniel. Just to just get in G4 quickly. And Vincent understanding that the odds of him winning this are very low. Mm. Just keep making moves. At this point, it's a battle of attrition. We can't see Daniel's face, so we don't know how tired he looks. I think he's fine. 
I don't know, I'm tired and I haven't thought for yeah, a second exhausted. Today. I mean, it's 11 o'clock at night, Rook C1, played. And uh, I guess G4 can be met by Rook H1. Yeah, or H4. It's a <coughs> decision that has to be thought through. Yeah, fixing but a weakness. Well, it is. Um, yeah, rook h1 is a problem. h4, bigger problem. Yeah, you've got to be a bit careful about that. And Daniel, of problem course. Is once you want h3, you can't yeah. just keep running around with your king because exactly. now this is hanging. So it was mildly committal. Mm -hmm. No, you can give a check. Go back, let's say. Maybe that's a good way to do this. Daniel doesn't look thrilled with his position. It doesn't look like he's panicking. He looks tired as well. Everybody's tired. Yeah, it's 11 o'clock in the evening. There's not many tournaments where you play this late, especially having played an earlier round. In fact, I can't even think of any tournaments where you play at this level. I mean, I've played tournaments this late. I remember the... Um, Spanish island, what's it called? Mallorca Open. We would start around at 8 o'clock in the evening. Sick. But it wasn't as tense. As no? Well, maybe. Yes, all these Spanish tournaments start ridiculously late. Yeah. Rook d3. It also makes some sense. Keeps an eye on this. <laughs> Oh, we've, we've got a guess. Company. No, I'll leave it to you. I can. How are you? Well, I'm quite good today. <laughs> quite good. Uh, yes. Hello, welcome, Magnus. It's Thank been you. a long time since I've sat here and you there actually in this yeah, setting. Yeah. Uh, a lot of things. No, uh, life moves on, life ch uh, yeah. things change, but one thing that remains constant is you seem to uh, to win a lot of chess games. So well done today. It was really nice actually this game. I think um, we'll go we'll go through it, and you'll tell me the key moments. Seems as though it was Jan was commenting that it's all kind of not newish. Ideas. Yeah, I mean, it's really embarrassing that, I mean, first of all, it's kind of insane to get two Benoni games in one day. Like, <laughs> I don't remember the last game I had one Benoni. Um, but anyways, uh, I, I end up going for this fairly modern line. But the thing is, like, I knew that 14A5 is the critical move. And then I looked at this. This is the last thing that I looked out before I left for the game, and oh, I right. still couldn't remember anything. So, so just so, just so to I, sorry, I had to sort of play by by hand. But so yeah. you were in the, actually expecting a Benoni today by by Richard. Yeah, it's one of the main things okay. that he plays, and he plays against things. So. Okay, so you saw a five, and then you left the hotel, and you couldn't remember much after after this moment. No, no. I, I mean, I thought I I, I remember like Bishop. Of Four was often making move, but yeah. not much more than that. Um, for instance, I had no idea what would happen if you'd gone rook a6 there, but I expect, uh, I suspect it's not a great move. And then, like, try and put the measurement d4. The engine says the white's much better. Why? I have no idea. Okay, whatever. Um, yeah. I so, yeah, this rook a3. Um, knight a6. Knight a6, castles, knight b4, yeah. blah, blah, blah. I mean, maybe queen b2 was inaccurate. I don't know. Maybe that was just unnecessary. Looked totally. Yeah, yeah whatever. Okay, queen d2, d b6. This is normal. Almost good, yeah. Um, yeah, Looked this. good. Yeah, I was really surprised by rook a7. Um, really? Yeah, I thought he'd go bishop a6. 
Yeah, we were looking at that uh, as well. And then I was thinking of going B3. Yeah, B3 looks normal. Um, and then rook A7 or something like this. It was not obvious to me like who's better and why. Um, I mean, I'd go H4 and, and, and play. Yeah. Um, okay, so we played rook A7. Um, honestly, like these positions are just really complicated. So I was kind of figuring it out on the fly. Um, well, I went to h4, which is logical. Um, rook f yeah, so rook f7, maybe you could have gone queen f6 immediately here. Um, yeah, we were looking at that as well. Yeah, I, I mean, if I take the pawn, I'm, I thought about this, bishop f5, then I go bishop b5. Um, the thing is, like, I had no idea how to evaluate such a position. Rook b8, knight c4. And then, I don't know. Tough. Really yeah, complicated. Yeah, it's really complicated. I mean, my king is safer, so I always have that to, to go on, but I, mean, I didn't know much else. Um, okay. But rook f7. Uh, so here I just needed a little bit of time to understand that h5, uh, queen f6 was um, not too impressive. Um, since like compared to um, compared to the immediate queen f6, he gets a good version. Right. Uh, so I was happy with bishop g5, mm -hmm. and now it's really really tough for him. I think bishop b7. I mean, okay, queen c7, but that's really hard to play. Like it's really hard to play like that. Because um, the queen's just offside here. Right? Yeah, queen. I go h5. Um, and if, yeah, I continue with either, yeah, bishop f4, bishop h6, sometimes hg, and not bishop f5 can always be met by um, bishop g4, so. Yeah, that's a key idea, yeah. isn't it? Okay, uh, so bishop b7 was logical. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, so I took. And this was a surprising moment for me and Jan. Me and Jan thought we, he was going to take with one of the rooks. Oh. Well, did you expect queen takes No, seven? I expected queen takes and then queen f6. Oh, right. So what was wrong with something like this, for example? Um, I, I guess nothing particular was wrong. I was going to go h5. Yeah. Yeah, rook g7. I thought, I thought it was rook just f6, a... rook f6, maybe. Yeah, rook f6. I go f3. f3. I thought... I thought it was just unpleasant for him. Right. Um, you have this h6 idea. Yeah, h6 is there everywhere. Okay, king g7. Okay, that's ugh, that's hard to play. Um, Can even throw in b3 to get the long diagonal yeah. here. I mean, th these are, are just mm. positions that engines just understand so much better uh, than than we do. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Um, well, he took with the queen. Took with the queen. Yeah, h5. But I was expecting, I was expecting queen f6. Okay. So this was the surprising part. I couldn't. Oh, I was not intending to take on b6. Why is that so good? Um, I guess he just has too many weaknesses. A5 is weak afterwards. Yeah. That's so not easy. And then just back. And then just back. Knight d3. B3. Just you leave the uh, Kasparov yeah. force on d3 and say. Yeah. Doesn't do anything. I this is not an octopus on no, this occasion. I guess I have f3 in some lines as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, I that was not obvious to me. Uh, okay, bishop f5. Now, however. Uh, bishop g4. Yeah, and this was the last, this was his last uh, chance, I think. Takes. Uh, and takes now rook f5. Yeah. yeah. This I was not so sure about. Yeah, Jan was a big fan of this. Yeah, I was, I was actually, no, I was, ah. yeah, I was actually, I was actually um, thinking of going queen h6 and go for that endgame. Instead of hg? Yeah, I was not so sure about this. Um, 
then queen of eight queen of eight uh, I thought rook e takes f8 uh, hg rook d5 uh, gh uh, I thought this is very pleasant for me yeah I'm yeah. looking for mm-hmm um, okay yeah Okay, he played rook g7. Rook g7 felt far too passive. Yeah, okay. No, but it, it was, I think it was just a trick. h6, queen d7. Just would have been ah. kind of, kind of a call shower. Oh, I have rook f4, Four. rook f6. Oh, ah, okay. yeah. And if r I have rook f7, you can yeah, take it. Yeah, I just couldn't see anything clear after queen d7. Mm -hmm. But I... I just needed to find this f4 idea uh, to go for... Uh, for rookie one, you mean? Yeah, for rookie one. Yeah, it's, it's just already cut, so yeah, I think it's... it's just gone. It's just, it's gone just immediately gone. So yeah, it's... Takes uh, everything uh, here. And then yeah, f4, f4, key idea. Yeah, yeah queen c3 wins as well, but that's kind of a bit too fancy. f4 is just so clean, and queen e2, and there's... Nothing you can really do to stop the invasion. Yeah. And the thing about the um, knights on b4 have sort of a, an interesting, um, they have a bit of an interesting story in King's Indian slash Benoni structures. Like, um, often they are, they can be a strong piece, but it, only if they can support if they can support other play in the center. Like oftentimes it ends up like now that the knight never moves again. Yeah. And um, because the action is happening on the on the king side. Um obviously like there were moments where you could go knight d three and so on, so it wasn't bad from the start, but uh I think it's quite telling that in this game like everything happened and the knight never moved again. And even when the knight does land on d3, you can play around it sometimes yeah, as well. Yeah, that was something that I couldn't quite appreciate, but, uh, but yeah, even then. All right, well, I think we could say that was a pretty good day. Pretty good bounce back day for you. Yeah. After a very, I mean, I know I didn't see you last night, I see you after the game, but I was speaking to Jan and I said how disappointed you would have been not converting uh, the piece up position against MBL uh, last night. Yeah. Or, or maybe you weren't that disappointed, I don't know. No, no, I was extremely disappointed. Right, that's what I thought. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, it was, to be fair, like, he found some amazing ideas. Yes. And my, my uh, clock manage management was, was horrible, but, right. um, yeah, I mean, not winning that is obviously not good enough. <laughs> right. But today, beautiful game. Yeah. Uh, two, two really... I mean, I think flawless. I mean, that last game at least was. I think it's flawless. It was a flawless game. So yeah, it wasn't put to the greatest of tests. Um, right. Of course, um, the opening worked out amazingly against Vincent. Yes. Yeah. Of course, a great day. And very quickly before you go, this is the last game remaining. Fridman against Kaima. Um, I would be worried here as white. Yeah, I think yeah, Friedman is going to lose. You think Friedman? I mean, he's he's done a lot of wrong to get in this position. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's you know Vincent is a better player, so so it's not um, too surprising. Actually, but this also means that we're I think we're going to have four. Like we're going to have one if Vincent wins, we're yeah. going to have one player on plus two, four players on. Pl on even score and yeah. then one on minus two. That's <laughs> quite That's nice, nice, sim sim nice, nice symmetry. symmetry. Yeah, and I think the problem is here you have this, this, and then rook b3 is... Yeah, uh, rook b3. This is, this is bad. This is very bad. Yeah. I mean, if you survive this, fair play, but I don't imagine... Yeah, I don't think it's going to... No. All right, it's been a long day. Look, we'll let you yeah. go. Thanks, Magnus, for coming. And we'll hopefully see you again here very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Magnus Carlsen, ladies and gentlemen, with a perfect day uh, for the GOAT. Um, really nice explanation there. I like how he was talking about the knight on B4, the role the knight plays in the King's Indian slash. Um, Benoni structures uh, and how the knight can just sometimes be just totally caught offside on B4. If it doesn't get in the game, it's just a... 
a bystander, just a pedestrian. Speaking of bystander, I'm back. How's Vinny doing? Vinny is, I think, going to win. Uh, he's got this really good chance now. He's managed to get active with the king, and defending this rook and pawn is just gross because, yeah, the pawns are immobile. This check and king g3 is in the air. Um, obviously, the the past f pawn is here. It looks tough. Looks really tough. Yeah. Um, Crowd still around. Not leaving Vinny's sight. Die Hard fans. Yeah, That's great movie. Yeah, I was going to say not Die Hard fans of, of Vinny, but Die Hard. Um, Paul Bruce Willis. You heard what happened to him. Yeah, he's not doing well, is he? He's not doing well. I think it's Parkinson's he's got. I don't know. Awful. Well, is that is that your favorite Hans or you prefer Nemo? <laughs> no, that, I definitely prefer the Die Hard Hans. Hans Gruber. Yeah, Hans Gruber. Fair enough. Yippie Kaye? Is that the that was? Was that him? Yeah, that was right. I'm not sure. Does Bruce Kaye? say that? Yeah, that's Bruce says that. Mm -hmm. Anyways, Talk. thinking of my youth, reminiscing, reminiscing. Mm. I used to have the posters in my room. Wow. Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, Train Spotting, Die Hard. Wow. So much has changed. H4. Gross. Yeah. Rook B2 check. Disgusting. Yeah, this is this is nasty. This king is H3, rook B3, B3 and king, king G4. G4. Yeah. I guess you just lose all these races. Check. King back. King G4. Let's say rook A7. Oh, no. <coughs> Way too slow. Normally the pawns can give check and the white pawns aren't really moving. It's just no chance. Yeah. yeah, and Daniel knows it. You can tell the body language has really changed here. It's not happy. Yeah, I actually... point must have been to go king h3 now, but it's not going to save it. No, this is, uh, this is, this is not going to happen. Well done to Vincent for grinding this one out. He, he could have easily just made a draw, but he understood that he was running zero risk and... Let me just catch up what happened uh, here. Yeah. Some moving around. Oh, Bishop at four. Well, that's a committal decision. Really committal really good, decision. But, uh. Now the king came in with tempo. King f3. Check. It's all still fine. Ah, king e4 is a really nice move, by king the way. King e4, four, more trickery. Uh, rook d6 was a mistake. Yeah, you had to stay put. Mm -hmm. Not easy. Now you go rook a1. Yeah, king apparently. G3. White is still holding, but of course. Yeah. Already under some pressure. Good job by Vincent. Yeah, Looking fantastic. Tired, but fantastic job by Vincent. He's going to grind this one out. Daniel realizes king h3 was not saving him. So he goes king f1. King f3. Mm. King f3, apparently not the most precise, because now there's rook e6. King e1 he's played. King e1 looks more natural, but you just lose the race. That's the problem, king g3. Once again, rook a7, g5, or a threatening g5 either way. I guess his idea is to go king d1 and just run over here. That's not a time. Here, rook f6, g8. G8. Yeah. Pawn runs. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now we have so seen Vincent make a mistake in an ending against Ding. So he's going to have to be a little bit careful. But extra alert. He goes king g4. That's the same theme of the king d1. g5 is still strong. <coughs> but yeah, that's... I'm not sure how obvious g5 is. But this king cut off on the back rank is just so bad. Yeah. 
because king h4 is less clear then king c1 and he does go king h4 but now king c1 there's hope for dying again so now either king h4 is b pawn run yeah this oh. is so surprising that he didn't go g5 really okay. surprising he's not quite there at the, 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 the absolute late yeah. stage easy to say sitting here with computer i'm not sure it's g5 rook f6 gh uh, i mean it's not it's not an easy easy decision rook e2 no. b5 you can lose now here comes boyan you can actually lose because if you play something really poor like rook e5 rook a4 check rook b4 suddenly and no, this is this is i i now take i now take black uh, sorry white i take white now G5, B6. Wow, I think he oh, realizes going? as well. Rook B6. Rook B6, and you have to calculate G4. And now, A4, you might lose. Four, three, three, so the king has king to B2. come. King H3. Messi. King F3. King F3 loses, then G2. Mm. No, it's still complicated. King G3? Wow. I mean... Very similar. Uh. No, I understand, but... Uh, I think Vincent's really unhappy. So, after B6 here, mm. Rook E8. Eight. Yeah, because H4, B7 is over. Yeah, not time, so... B, so let's try B7. No, still. He could still win this. <coughs> yeah. So rook B8. Rook B8, rook B6, and I lose as white or what? Well, the h pawn is pretty fast. Oh my god. B6, he has to go rook B8, rook E8. 46 seconds. Vincent yeah. Kaiman. He will. <coughs> of course he will go rook E8. Not here, because of this. So These positions are just insanely tough to play. And no humans really play these perfectly. Hmm. Apparently rook a7 is a strong move. I'm trying to figure out why g5 is not great here. And now the rook can get behind the h-pawn and white is mm. in time with pushing these guys. Mm. Wow, and you lose rook h7? Mm -hmm. Gee. Oh, this will be heartbreaking for Vincent if he loses this. Well, he doesn't have to play g5, but well, yeah, that's a key resource, so the h pawn can be stopped. I think so you'll play rook a7 this. as well. Yeah. I think you'll find it. Let's see. Can I go rook g8, or is that too subtle? Wow. Okay, but it doesn't change much because you're here, here. Oh, uh -huh. wow. With such little time left, 10 seconds only bonus per move. Um, expect some mistakes. Time is running out. Daniel's like, damn, I wish I had 20 minutes here. A big, yep, a big puff of the cheeks, and he's going for no a4. a4. Okay, that's not losing, but okay, seven. It might still transpose, right? Uh, Seems much cleaner. Okay, now h4, then you really have to go okay, seven. And all of a sudden, black has some more options. So I'm not loving this. Okay, he's gonna go h4. Likely. Played. 
And Roque 7, well done Daniel. Roque 7. Finding this. Move too late, but still in time to hold. But now Rook G8, yeah, it's much trickier. Now Rook C7, you're not in time like earlier. You were in time with the H pawn, so one square behind. No, you're all sort of in time, right? Mm -hmm. A5? Okay, H3. Now you need to find Rook. Wow, only Rook E7 works, but Rook D7. Rook D7 looks more normal. And yeah, he's played Rook D7. Yeah. That's losing. Yeah, but it's impossible to understand why. Like why the rook on the e-file compared to the d-file is winning? I guess here you just go rook b8, yeah? <coughs> That's actually not impossible to understand. <coughs> but why, what's the difference between the e-file and d-file? I don't, I don't understand. So h2, rook e3, king h4. The checks save you, but they don't. Anyway, we should focus on the action. Rook d4, king h3. Rook d3, king g4. Rook d4, king g5. Draw? Did they draw? I think so, yeah. <coughs> he also didn't see how to. <coughs> Holy! Get out of it. Wow! But he's gonna be disappointed when he sees it's minus five. Minus five, but why is it? Mm. Ah, but this is impossible. Because here rook b8 is not in time because of rook h1. That's what they right. saw. Right, yes. So the way to win is rook c8 check and rook c5, which is very difficult. That's why the rook had to be in the e-file. So you could go king here d1. The king <coughs> can't go to the d-file because of rook d8 check. But yeah, that's... <coughs> it's literally impossible. Mm. Impossible with little time. And now with the king here, now rook c5 saves cause, or wins. Because a6, rook b5, b7, rook b5. And wow. black just wins. Oof, Vincent will kick himself. But yeah, that's very, very hard to spot. General good save by Friedman, who looked like he was losing this, but got away with it. And there he is. Signing boards. Signing. Let's see. Let's let's see. Uh, great. That guy saying no, you don't get to sign my board. <laughs> great save there by by Daniel. That's a beautiful really, really selfie right there. And uh, oh. he's signing a few boards. He's a friendly guy. He's he certainly is. Yeah. Sign everything. And he saved a position which yeah, I would have given him spirits. zero, close to zero chances to save. And, uh, well, uh, just uh, another day of, of action. Magnus Carlsen bouncing back with two impressive uh, victories. <coughs> yep, let's look at the results. Bunch of draws, but also a bunch of bloodshed. Magnus with two out of two today, and MVL won that roller coaster of a game against Richard Rapport. Tough day for Richard, losing twice, losing the lead to Mr. Magnus, who's now field ahead, point ahead of the field, bunch of guys on 50%, ding, unremarkable so far, but hasn't lost a game, and the Germans stay on minus one in shared last place, but they're very, very close to at least second place, so anything still in play. Tomorrow's a rest day because of the infamous Easter Friday. So we won't be here, but you will return bigger, better, faster, stronger with star power. Anish Giri will take my seat on Saturday, 3 yes. p.m. I'm not sure that's official or I'm not sure if Anish has agreed to come, but we'll just announce it, put some pressure on the guy. <laughs> and. <clears throat> Yeah, it's going to be an amazing show. Three more days of action here. I just want to say, Jan, it's been nice being back here with you again. It's been, it's been a pleasure. Thank you yeah. for... Uh, in the old days. Yeah, for, for all of your mm -hmm. hard work. Yep. Good humor. Mm -hmm. Well, so there. Keep watching the show. Yes.
watch the candidate show on chess.com with a bunch of amazing hosts as well. Buy my chessable course, part one is out. An aggressive one E4 repertoire. <laughs> I worked very hard on it. Check that out. And come back Saturday or come to Karlsruhe. Lawrence Trent is buying drinks for everybody who asks him for a signature. Not true, but certainly can have a drink if you do pop down. It's been a pleasure, guys. See you all Saturday for the next round of the Grenka Chess Classic 2024.